Insert can opening noise. Three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. It is story time live. Joining me is a very special guest. Some of you may know him as the real Dr. Vankman. What's going on, RDV? Not much. Look at that. What are you popping open? Some Mellow Yellow. Mmm. They call it Mellow Yellow. It's like you read my mind. I love Mellow Yellow. I wish I could find that shit in cans around here. Not out here in Southern California. You got to go to small This town. is homemade Mellow Yellow. Oh, really? I get my own. No, it's <laughs> I was like, I make some homemade Mellow Yellow, but you wouldn't want to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just drinking iced tea tonight. Um I have, I've had my allotment of soda, and last night drinking and then working today was not a good mix. <laughs> Just like, and I need to get more beer. I'm out of beer. I think I have one left. Alcohol is really only good if it's like winter. I've noticed here by me. If it's like freaking hot as balls outside, what? I don't want to. I don't want to have alcohol because I sweat more then. Oh man, no. I, good. A good. Light lager on a hot day is so refreshing, and you got to get it like super cold, like just so cold it's like almost about to freeze, but not quite. Oh man, I love that. I always get headaches if I'm from whatever whatever I'm drinking if I'm outside, and then you know having alcohol on top of it too in the heat. I hate going in and out of the air conditioning. Are you, sucks. You go from. Are you allergic to the outdoors? You can admit it if you if you are. I live in the outdoors. I have a cardboard check, and then yeah. <laughs> uh <laughs> My goodness. It comes with free snow during the winter. Free snow during the winter? Yeah. That's amazing. I should come get some. Uh, let's should, go. Let me, let me see who's in the chat for tonight here before I forget and it gets way too long because I've been known to do that. Uh, Melissa is first. Congratulations, Melissa. You win a no prize. And for those of you that know what a no prize is, you also win a no prize. Uh, Dragon Majesty is second good to see you hr goes vocal formerly known the artist formerly known as ff2 uh i think it's going to take a while for people to get to know who you are hr um and Marania, so. well maybe not people are smart the the chat's pretty smart uh let's well, see well they're here they must be smart <laughs> they must be <laughs> either that or <laughs> really really bored maybe they're inmates at guantanamo or something um <laughs> They don't speak English, so they're like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Dude, pictures on screen. Yay. Yay. Uh, Dragon Majesty's here. Jimmy. Comics quirks with Jimmy. 
the guy whose YouTube name is a mouthful. He says, yo, let's go. Did I get that right? I don't know. Uh, uh, Dragon Ball Talk is here. I'm trying to think. See, he has some other unique names. Ed Brewer, I see. Um, there we go. Um, that's, all, that's all the people that I see that have typed in the chat. You guys, if you're, oh. lurk, if you're lurking in the background, that's totally fine. But, you know, say hi. Get to know people. This is uh, It's nice to hang out with regulars, talk comics. Um, no, Ian he, Rondo, he said, let's goo. Oh, let's goo. Oh, that's, a yeah, whole, that's, yeah. a, that's an entirely he, he's, different. He's been buying that slime stuff at Walmart. That's gross, Jimmy. Let's goo. Ugh. I don't even want to know what that means. Um, <laughs> he meant grew, but he's checked out goo. Oh, he's grew. Still I'm, I'm down with grew. <laughs> that's one of my favorite comics. I sadly, I wish that was a still running comic. Uh, the grew. Did you ever read grew? I've seen it, and I can understand why some people like it. I'm just not a personal fan of it. Have you tried it? I've tried Gru. You've tried Gru, but it did not grow on me. It's funny as fuck. It's hilarious. But it grew on it grew on them though. It's a Conan parody. You like Conan? I like Conan, but I don't like parodies of Conan. You don't like parodies? No, not really. I I feel like. I've gotten, like, there's so many parodies that have been hyped up like crazy, especially, like, with all the anime stuff, too. That really annoyed me. Yeah. That was, like, all the Dragon Ball Z and Bridge everyone was into and stuff. It's just, like, so you're making fun of the original source material. Okay. Do you like the original source material, or are you just hating on it? That's, I mean, this... Well, that's the difference. Know. That's, that's yeah. the difference between satire and parody. Satire yeah, makes but... fun of things from a mockery. Like, you don't really like it. So you're satirizing it and you're kind of mocking it. Parody is like a roast. You do it out of love. Like you love like like Spaceballs. It's clear that but, like it, it's clear that uh, Mel Brooks loves Star Wars. And that's why Spaceballs, it comes off as such a fun parody. But are you sure those words still have the same meanings? Everything's being changed in the dictionary. I guess. <laughs> like if you switch around. In my, <laughs> in my head, the words haven't changed. So anyways, a Gru is... Gru is a, an exceptional book. I mean, that's why I ran for so many years. Um, it's so funny. I mean, I got introduced to it, much like I get introduced to many comic books that I love, by first thinking it's stupid. <laughs> and I was a little kid, and I first got into comics, and one of the other kids in the neighborhood was into comics too, and he had Gru the Wanderer. And I was getting, like, X-Men and Punisher and all that stuff, and he had Gru the Wanderer. I was like, that comic looks stupid. And he's like, no, dude, Gru's cool. And I was like, no, it's not. Look at him. He looks stupid <laughs> and stuff. So he challenged me to read one. And then I read it. And I was like, this is the coolest comic ever. And then I remember like trading him for like his entire Gru collection. I, I, I don't remember what I traded, but I traded a buttload of something to get his got, Gru collection. Got these Pokemon cards. Pure mint. <laughs> this is way before Pokemon cards. <laughs> This is in the eighties. Um when Gru Okay, this is these are my tops bubblegum. When Gru was <laughs> Gru was still at Marvel Comics. Um, um and the only know, comic I I was gonna say the only comic I was kinda close to that would be Hagar the Horrible. Yeah, that was it's a a similar. It's similar. But not not exactly, but I mean like just saying that was the only thing I really that was close to being like a Viking stuff, you know, jokes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I would encourage you to. to I mean, it's funny, and it's it, unlike a comic strip. Like, it's a full comic. Yeah. There's a story. Yeah, yeah. There's a story involved, and Gru goes on adventures, and he's just like the biggest idiot in the world. He's like the literally the dumbest person on the planet, but he's also like the greatest warrior. So like, no one can beat him in combat, but he's just a buffoon, and he. So like, war warlords and stuff will like hire him because they're like, oh my god. My my daughter was captured by this dragon, and like they hear like, oh, there's Gru is here, and like he's a great, oh, let's hire him, you know, because he's the greatest warrior. But then Gru like makes a mess of everything, fucks everything up, you know, and and no one can stop him because he just right kills everybody. And it's just Sergio Aragon is one of the greatest cartoonists of all time. Um, Rania puts in she's she remembers his work from Mad Magazine, which was yeah, I loved his work in Mad Magazine. Um, See when Mad when Mad Magazine came out, I was too young to really like go and look at that stuff because you know, it's like it seemed more adult. To me. When it came out, Mad Magazine's been around way like since before I was born. Well, 
the nineties, man, I, I, I was, it goes just getting my teens. I remember seeing it on the shelves, like, you know, at the hobby store. And it's just like, it just seemed more like growing up to me. I never really opened it up though. So, I mean, I'll have to go back and look at uh, it. Mad Magazine know. is absolutely made for kids. I mean, not like little kids. Mad Magazine is made, or well, at least it used to be when I was growing up reading Mad Magazine. Mag- it was, it was like 12 year olds was like the perfect audience. Cause it has that yeah. like preteen or early teen humor. A lot of like a lot of that kind of jokes and uh, a lot of parody like Mad Magazine. They would always do like parodies of like whatever movie had just come out, whatever was like the biggest movie. They would do kind of like a joke parody mini comic of that movie. And I always found that funny. There was like regular run in thing like like Spy versus Spy was one of my favorite um, portions of Mad Magazine. And Sergio Aragones, he always would do cartoons in like the borders of it. So you'd be reading the magazine and you'd see like little mini cartoons in the borders, usually like silent, yeah. no words. Just But you could figure out what was going on because he's such a great cartoonist. Anyways, Gru is an old time favorite. Uh, yeah. I love it. I wish it was. But yeah. Well, that's also why I liked uh, Dick Brown's uh, Hagar the Horrible because the guy also did High on Lows and he also did Beetle Billy. Um, so I mean, I, I I was always into the su- Sunday Sunday Funnies. And I don't yes. think Gru was was in the was in the comic strips at all. It was like no, said, it, it wasn't was a, a, it wasn't a strip. Yeah. No, so I wasn't really exposed to that any, uh, until like until I started hanging out with you guys yeah. around 2018. Uh, and I <laughs> sure, and I can completely understand. Like I said, it's one of those books that a lot of people would just look at the cover yeah. and go, "That's not for me," and never experience it. Mm-hmm. And I was the same way. Like I was like, "Whatever," and then dared me to try it and i was like okay and then i had to eat my words so i fell in love with it um it's just and i'm really picky on comedy so it's tough for me too like it's it's cool to like read a book and especially today man there's just there's no good funny books like there's is there a, a comedic writer in comics today that you're aware of i don't know um comedic like i said <sighs> It depends on what the what the, what they're doing. Like I've seen people write good like stories, but I've also seen them also write like you know cringe like you know preachy stories. With you no, know, it, it all depends on who the editorial write what they're writing for. I can't really name names offhand because I was don't really pay attention to names really. But um, I'm trying to think because. I'd have to I'd have to do some research on that because there's probably there's probably a, quite a few. So you're not, but you're not aware of any. Yeah, I'm not aware of any. <laughs> like, there if like if you wanted to like if you were like yeah. you know what I kind of want to read a funny comic book that's a comedy, I wouldn't know where to look. I I mean, and I'm paying you know because I'm into comics and I do the YouTube and all this. Stuff, I'm paying attention to everything that comes out. I mean, I don't I don't read. <laughs> but a small fraction of it, but I yeah. at least pay attention and I listen to what other people have to say. So I'm v- very aware. I would consider myself a very aware comic fan right now. And I can't think of any one that's out there that, that anyone's even talking about me like, Oh yeah, this person writes this book. It's hilarious. Like you remember like the tick. Yeah. Like there's no books like that today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I, I don't know where I would go. Um, I think just humor, I, and it might be because of the era that we're in, the whole SJW far left. No, you know, like you can't do jokes, right? Because yeah, like, oh, don't offend someone. And it, it, the problem is in comedy, someone is bound to be offended. That's just the nature of comedy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, even if you try to do clean comedy, there's going to be someone who, you know, gets offended. You know, just like. Uh, Anyways, uh, well, speaking of speak, but speaking of comedy though, the only thing I can go close to is I, I think his name is Fred v- Valent Van Lente, the one who's going to do in the first issue of Dynamite Lives. Uh huh. That actually, they like as you know, they put Ash Limbs in that book, and that added a lot of humor to what was original kind of a dark, depressing, like you know, like story. <laughs> the the you know, Cavell's know what Dynamite is. Dynamite is rich at crossover. Between all the current uh, ongoing you know, dynamite uh, characters, it's deceased you know, for dynamite. D- pretty much, yes. And dynamite lives is like now it's the second round. Deceased two saw, Pretty much, these are the other people who who are we're now getting introduced to this. They introduced Ash Williams, 
So right off the bat, like the first two pages is Ash Williams, and I'm just cracking up because it's like I feel like I'm reading the Army Darkness books. That's probably the closest I've been to comedy level, and probably in the past couple of years has been those books going through through Dynamite. I can't remember who I, I said like you know I as far as the writer, I have to go back and look who the writer was for those books. But um, I always I always enjoyed it because it was stupid humor. It wasn't like you know over the top and uh, like you know you know or offen- and offensive humor, but it was like. No, because playing to what Ash was in the Evil Dead 2 movie in Army of Darkness, he was an idiot. And some he always, by his luck, would always, you know, save the day. So I'm curious to see what's going to go happen in this issue, though. But I'm, just, I'm not going to spoil anything more. Really, I'll support the book. Check it out if you want to. And um, for those who aren't really into the Marvel and DC, check out Dynamite or check out Xenoscope. Check out, like, Kirkman stuff, Skybound. It's a lot of cool books out there. Oh, they so if you, re- so for those who are just like, you know, I'm done with comic books, just because you're finding what's going on Marvel and DC, you can check other um, independent stuff. And you'll find stuff you like. But. So uh, I, real quick here on the screen, uh, we'll get, let me get to the dynamite book in a second. Sure, uh, sure. It's sure. a, it's a vase productions is in the chat. I didn't, didn't say hi. Hello. Uh, there was a little bit of questions. Uh, just want to cover real quick about scrolling. Um, Marania said, "Please don't scroll or whatever." I believe what you're talking about is spamming. If you, yeah. if you're, if you're typing like real one word quick, over, yeah, like a couple, one <laughs> word, and you just, it just causes everything to scroll up real quick, which isn't necessarily a big deal. But if everyone starts doing that, it just makes it really tough for me. Makes it tough for people to follow the chat. So just try to refrain. <laughs> that's all. I guess that's. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to be a, a chat Nazi here. I appreciate people uh, posting stuff. Uh, Zach is impressed that I have double digit viewers. Thanks, Zach. I, I'm your faith in me is always astounding and makes me feel good about myself. Um, and let's see, Zach's eyeballing the omnibus of the Justice League International right now. All right, uh, you should be eyeballing Ash on Comics. But hey, if you want to, you know, two time me, that's that's your business. Um, Let's see. Sex Criminals has comedy in it by Mac Fraction and Chip Zdarsky. Does it really? Really? Does does it, though? I, the jury's out on that. I, I One thing I know is Chip Zdarsky can't write comedy. That's, I think, why so many people thought Chip Zdarsky was a terrible writer for so long, because he was, like, out writing well, Spider-Man, and people were just like, this is shit. Yeah, um, I guess, like I guess I it made you wish to go back to reading Dan Slott Spider-Man, and that's not a good thing me yeah um let's see uh i'm just gonna catch up here melissa loves the universal monsters dragon ball likes evil dead uh and hr noticed that i got the last issue of birthright we're gonna get to that in a sec and uh i forgot to hit the timer the opposite of birthright death wrong sorry lots of beeping on my channel i don't i don't have a bird like some other channels so i just have beeping. cheap cheap (laughs) <laughs> i'm not looking for a bird that's okay. i wouldn't want to infringe on other uh other channels uh, intellectual properties let's see um marani says we'll be getting to the book eventually this fine community someone complaining about so uh just real quick if you're wondering what the beeping and the whole thing is about is i, I do a reading of uh, comics at night late night put you to bed tell a little bedtime story um, because your parents won't do it for you anymore. And uh, that's what Ash is here to do. But before we do that, this is sort of a time to like stream and just chit chat and, you know, talk amongst comic friends and talk. One of the th- things I love about this hobby and the reason I even do this channel is to have other f- comic fans to talk to. <laughs> in the real world, like everyone I know in the real well, that's, I have like one comic friend in the real world. Um, but I don't, there's not really much to talk about. So this is kind of my. My whole is that your LCS owner? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Hi. Oh, guys, back in. <laughs> God. Um, see you, no, see you so, next Wednesday. Don't threaten me. So <laughs> you're distracting me. So I, that's what I do here. And I notice that sometimes I get carried away, and some people are like, "I came here to read a book. That's what you advertised," and you're sitting here jibber jabbering about a bunch of nonsense. So I, I started setting up this timer. So it's 30 minutes. It's now at 28 minutes and 30 seconds. If you absolutely hate listening to me and Vankman 
talk <laughs> about whatever, uh, you can uh, just set your watch and then come right back. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, you can just scrub the little slider at the bottom of the screen until you see the comic book and get to the book there. Um, and if and, you really hate us, we'll go longer. And if that really bothers you, you can always send me money and pay me to do something different. But <laughs> this is free, so you get what you pay for. Uh, anyways, right. no. So hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, I guess I, I encourage everyone in the chat to not just you know hang out with me and anyone else like Vankman who's joining me, but also amongst yourselves. Like this is all – I'm trying to build like a – I hate the word community, but you know like – a bunch of regulars that we're all friends here. Um, tavern, a What's tavern, <laughs> yeah. ash on beer. Um, let's see. HR ash, says a lot dark. of Kirkman stuff is great. That and Jeff Lemire's work. Um, Marani says you read Shelley Frank Shelley Mary Shelley's Frankenstein in high school for a religion class of all things. Dracula read in college for science fiction class. Interesting. Um, I never read Dracula, but I did read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein once upon a millennia ago. Uh, I remember being kind of impressed, actually, that like that was way better than any of the Frankenstein stories I'd ever been told before. <laughs> I was like, why don't you tell this story? Why do you change it? Same thing with Dracula. Like all the Dracula movies, nothing like the book, except for Francis Ford Coppola's, the one he did, um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. That one was pretty accurate. Um but like all the old school Dracula movies, like nothing like the book. And he, then then Francis Ford Coppola did his, and I was like, oh, this is supposed to, what it's supposed to be. Uh, Fables comic is my favorite. They're coming back. Um, so Melissa's happy that uh, Fables is coming back. I've heard nothing. Have you ever read Fables, Finkman? I've played the game. Um, <laughs> I have the game. I have the game. I played and a little I, bit too. I and I've, I read I I read like a comic vine like. On up the optional you know, backstories about certain characters that I like, Baby Wolf. I like Snow White. And then I saw how uh, they just butchered my character, and I had no interest to go read them. It's, it's, oh, I was I, like, oh. I really want to read Fables someday because I have heard nothing but good things. Like, everyone that's read Fables, like, oh, Fables is so good. And I'm like, all well, right. Um, I'll, I definitely want to check it out. Be, I just never have. That being said, though, uh, the originals probably are great or good at least, you know. Uh, but this new stuff, uh, I'll wait. Well, it's it's, it's the same guy, Bill because, Willingham. Because, so it's yeah, but it doesn't, doesn't mean it might be different though this time around. Uh, and that's true. That's it wasn't it wasn't like the last thing he did was so long ago that no. like you know like if Neil Gaiman came back and did Sandman today, it would probably be a lot different than it was. In the early nineties, well, the right? reason I say that because we we've seen this before. We've seen this with Frank Miller coming back and writing something, and it's not up to par what he used to. Oh, no. calm down! That yeah, because he's <laughs> he's fucking ancient, like, and he's de- his whole body is like Wait, debilitated. He's, one? <laughs> he's all debilitated from alcohol abuse and who knows what else. Like, the guy's a relic, uh, and it wasn't <laughs> like he came back and like. Oh yeah, two years ago Frank Miller wrote the best thing ever, and then now he's writing shit. That's not what happened. It this happened over like Claremont's years. also done the same too. Claremont's come back and like you know, he's not what he was back then. You know, and yeah, but that's I, that's a different. And, that's a whole and, other can of worms. <laughs> Frank, see here's here's the thing. Chris Claremont is the kind of writer that needs to be in a certain element to shine, and what that element was was a long, ongoing soap opera drama. That's what he turned X-Men into. And no one was really doing that in comics until he started doing it, and then people started copying him, and now it's kind of the norm. But that's what he does, and he takes a while to build up to things. Um, he's never been the the writer that you can just be like, oh, look, here's a miniseries, except for Wolverine, which I credit Frank Miller anyways, because... You know, but every other like mini series and things that he did, he doesn't have enough time. He's one of those build up writers. He like gets he gets because if you read his books, he's constantly laying subplots like every comic you read of his and like X-Men. It'll be like, oh, here's a subplot, like three subplots per issue minimum. Right. And then you go on to the next issue and then the next issue and then like 
12 issues later, you'll go like one of the subplots that he laid foundations for is like, oh, it's it's coming up. And it's like you have to let that happen because once those subplots start, he starts building, then you see like the brilliance of his writing. But when he has like these short spats, they, they they're not as good. Plus, modern Marvel, he just doesn't care anymore. Modern Marvel doesn't care. It, it, yeah. Whatever. Um, I, I did, don't know. I did I'm... read a couple of his novels, though. They were decent. But I don't know, like you said, like I'm looking forward to seeing some of these other writers, like, you know, moving on to other projects. I, I'm just like getting sick. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to rip on Marvel DC. I'm just saying I'm just getting bored with seeing the same people going on, on Batman. You know, I would love to see Kate's version because Kate's took Venom, who pretty much was dead in the water, and made him back to where people actually wanted to buy the book. So, yeah, I, well, mean, I mean, I know it's using. He revolutionized the character. Yeah, I would. I'd be curious to see what he would do to Batman if they allowed him to do it right. Well, you Batman know, doesn't need to be revolutionized. Well, Frank Miller would kind of revolutionize them. So, imagine like if he, I'm saying, what would his spin be if he did like a tribute? Right. You don't need to do yeah. it again. Don't be a don't be a Tom <laughs> King, right? Batman, on, Batman is already certain. You can do it sometimes. Like Batman needed that because if you read what Batman was before Frank Miller. With some questionable things, Frank Miller, because what Frank Miller did is he didn't destroy the past. He just added to it and built on it and kind of gave it that extra thing. Yeah. Like what he did with Daredevil before Frank Miller, Daredevil was just like, look, I'm the kind of acrobatic superhero. I don't have fear. And I catch a bad guys. And it was just like kind of a fun little. And then Frank Miller came on and says, you know what? I'm going to like bring this a little bit darker, focus on the whole concept of Hell's Kitchen being like this really grimy just bad, you know, dangerous place to be. I'm going to bring in Ninja and like Daredevil was trained by Ninja. And you're like, oh, like it's just that extra seasoning. Uh, I just don't want Chip Zdarsky to ever to write, you know, uh, Batman because then we have Bruce in jail. Dude, I would love, he's my dream pick to put on Batman. <laughs> um, issue 15, he's still in jail since issue five. <laughs> dude, there is nothing uh, wrong with that jail series. <laughs> Uh, they should just tell it daredevil in jail <laughs> behind bars so i'm trying to get to the comics it's it's but it's very difficult with you you're kind of like a do you ever do you remember you, you you're, you're old enough to remember those uh those what do they call them they were like gremlins no what were they called like toy hot dogs they called them hot they weren't really a hot dog but it was like this like slippery rubber thing that like you try you like squeeze it and it would like oh. slip out of your hand I'll get a little disturbed over here. Yeah, it's, they're, they're, I think they were called like hot dogs. Uh, they're I haven't. They're, they're definitely Ooh. something from my generation. Marania probably look, knows what I'm talking about. I'm looking brain giving you the you know, the finger there. Basically, so he's saying Bill William is the same age as Frank Miller. <laughs> yeah, but he's not destroyed his life with alcohol use. They don't know that. I don't hang out with Bill. Well, it's apparent that he's still. Never mind. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, um, I... but, you, but you but you know how I feel whenever I, when people say that Wes is just too old to be Blade. Okay. We live in Hollywood. All right. All right. Hollywood. All right. Wait. Anything can be done. Stop. We're gonna get this train back on the tracks. There's All no right. Train. So I gotta get get to because I got this comic scene where I've been promised to people we're gonna talk about comics and we're gonna sit here never get into it. Um. We got 13 people now. See, Dragon Ball's like eight minutes looking at Ash, <laughs> the bottom, <laughs> looking at the same slide. He's roasting me now. Um, he's here, he's playing the Jason Lives. Zach or got the nine issue Dynamite crossover by Bill Willingham. You can tell he planned his stories for the future, but I don't think he got the chance to follow up. I don't know what that crossover was. Um, and Eric says Batman from 1980 to 85 were the best six years of Batman. Jerry Conway and Doug Minch deserve way more credit than they get. No, Frank Miller deserves way more credit than you give him, Mr. Breen. That's what I got to say to you. Um, so I'll call it. Why would we give him credit? He wrote the best comic ever. That's why we give him credit. Um, the back of a napkin. <laughs> the back of a napkin. <laughs> so, uh, so new comic book day was yesterday. I often pick up my comics on Thursday because I got to make a special trip on Wednesdays if I do. So 
I don't get a lot of books these days anymore. And uh, so today I had three books on my pull list. Uh, and I was in the shop. And they had this Dynamite Lives cover. Which you had shown me I'd, I knew about it. And I, I, so I picked it up. There was only one left. And I was like, oh. And it was like really pristine condition. I just really like this cover quite a bit. Um, I actually prefer the Vamprella with the zombie face just because it feels more fitting for Evil Dead that that would be the case. Uh, yeah, it, it does have the Army of Darkness callback. Yeah, know? I don't I don't see Ash shooting beautiful Vampirella. <laughs> I, I bought the beautiful Vampirella because I wanted to see it. <laughs> this is the more, you found me beautiful once. Honey, you got real ugly. Um, I, Yeah, this is a beautiful cover. I don't know why this wasn't the A cover. I sat in the comic book store for like 10 minutes and just stared at it. And I was like, ah, I don't really buy Dynamite comics. Do I buy it for just the cover? Uh, so I was like, ah, fuck it. I only got three books. So um, this is could have been a Marvel or a DC book. But uh, you assholes at Marvel and DC keep pushing away the fans with your stupid nonsense. So this gave uh, this Dynamite book a try. I also I, got I... in the mail this beautiful, massive tome called... Uh, criminal uh, volume one the deluxe edition this thing is ginormous it is beautiful it's 33.99 on amazon and i was like man that's that's about as much as i used to spend on dc comics like I, i'm saving money and i'm getting things like this that are just beyond this is on a whole nother league than the comics i'm reading um my so two of the best books here oblivion song of birthright birthright number 50 it's the last issue. I'm sad. It's such a good book. But uh, Geiger is, this is number three. I haven't read it yet, but very promising book. Are you reading any of these besides the Dynamite, which we obviously know? Uh, I I had to get back into Oblivion's song. I, I think I'm like a couple issues behind. Birthright, not Geiger. I haven't really, um, I haven't got into Criminal. I'll be my next thing after I finish American Vampire. But... I noticed there's a book they're missing there. They came out this week. And you didn't grab. What's that? Erratic. Oh, I have the floppies. Why didn't you get the trade volume? Because I have the floppies. She had both. Because I'm on a budget. Oh. I mean, I could have put this Dynamite book back. So by not buying the same comics multiple times, it lets me buy more of different comics. You could have put Oblivion Song back. Hell no. This is one of the best comics on the stands. <laughs> um, you just want to have Ash next to Ash in two different titles. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this cover. was just gorgeous. I was like, I had to reward Dynamite for putting out. This should have been the A cover, though, you dumbasses. My God. It's, yeah, the original. The, I think the A cover is the Lucia Perot one, the painted one, which looks horrible because what they would change would, would be better if they said, like, for whatever reason, they don't have the maybe they don't have the rights to do Bruce Campbell's like this anymore. Well, they did right? on this cover. I mean, this is a a variant cover. I the gotta, variant, yes. I got to be the main cover though. I don't understand why the main cover that they, you know, even the interior book, the art is not anything like him. They changed it. So that's my only my only gripe from it. But then again, you know, it's what, what do you expect? You know, it's. Where is this damn book? Very bottom. And it, it was. I had to scroll down. Oh, there it is. Dynamite. See, yeah. So yeah, just real quick, like comparison here. You can see if it pops up. This is what the the A cover looks like. And you know, honestly, I mean, it's, it's fine painted art. It's just that Ash looks not. Who the hell is this guy? Um, yeah. That, and like I said, usually he does a lot of good pinups you know but i was just like why is ash look like he's just like and then you compare it to this oh, art what, what's that guy's name wow oh, there's a the one actor so much better and look that's ash's likeness i mean it's like a bad richard like Grieco, 30 year or... younger <laughs> bruce campbell um yeah i just loved i i'm not a big vampirella fan so the idea of ash Shooting a couple shotgun shells into her gourd. It's kind of funny to me. Um, sorry to Vampirella fans. 
Uh, <laughs> um, oh, that's what it looks like. Hank Azaria. That's what it looks like. Hank Azaria. <laughs> Azaria. But, <laughs> that's what I, I get vibes. I see it. <laughs> but Venkman, look at look at the screen here. Look at how many variant covers there are for this issue. There's 26 freaking covers. Yeah, I know. It's they great. <laughs> This is not a huge selling book. There's more covers than probably my store ordered. I don't think my store ordered 26 copies yeah. of this. I got the I got the Lindsner cover though. That's another one I got. Uh, let's see what number two is coming out. Let's see another a, ugly cover. Ah, it's an ugly cover. Um, let's see. Do they have? Oh, oh, look at this one. Is it the same? If Sudi, if, dude, if Sudium yeah. is doing the art. On all these, I might just have to. But Red Sonia. <laughs> oh, man. At first, I think she was wearing a top there. <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to pick this one up. I might I might get this whole series. Uh, one thing I missed about the Deceased, I, I loved their variants. on the. Um, the Deceased did an excellent job with those variant covers. Um. I like this yeah. site too. League Comic Geeks lets you, uh, let you oh. do lots of cool things. That's another thing I was gonna say. Like League Comic Geeks is usually pretty accurate. There was a the heavy metal book that Tarna, I think it's called, whatever, was supposed to come out, but the people who, or I guess the behind who own it, the, the book cover, never shipped it out to comic book stores. Oh, They're all geez. messed up. Yeah, so I was like, I went to because they looked. It's like. It's not even on their pull list. Like they know they order it every single week, but it was it was on on their invoice. So here's the I mean, here's the A cover you might be getting. Zombie. <laughs> that looks nothing like Red Sonia. Doesn't? Not really. It kind of does. Heck, uh, I guess. I mean, I'll way. defer. You are the expert. Oh, look at why again. Again, why are you not doing this guy as the main cover? I will not know. Yeah, that definitely is uh, Bruce Campbell around the there. This what wears a... me out when I when I see the skull face. <laughs> yeah. I, it's like I'm getting like those flashbacks of uh, Red Sonia versus uh, or Mars Attacks. <laughs> yeah, I might have to pick these up. Is it is it only a three issue series? Uh five issues. Because uh, Lee and Kong only go so far ahead. Because the original one, Dynamite, um, this is called Dynamite. That one was five issues long. Uh, but they see. didn't, yeah, so, but that other guy at Sudion, uh, they didn't have his art. I don't believe so with the original one. But Apparently, uh, they want me to donate my liver to Frank Miller so that he can live. If I donate my liver to Frank Miller, that he'll become a superstar again. Maybe I should do that. Even if he gets a liver, his brain's probably fried from the alcohol. Yeah, it could be. Like, so you should donate your brain. I don't care. Frank Miller. <laughs> Frank, Frank Miller. Frank, Frank Miller's last twenty years may not have been that good, but his first twenty years were fucking stellar. Well, yeah, uh, Dare, Daredevil and Batman. I, I love it, dude. Sin no, City. But... Sin... I didn't care for as much Sin City. Uh... I think Sin City. Well, yeah, but you now have hair on your chest, so you should try reading it again. You might. Dude, you want to talk about? Mm, you want to talk about some fan service? Did you just assume I I just haven't had hair on my chest since, since I was a kid? No, I'm assuming you uh, didn't okay. have hair on your chest as a kid, and now you've you know you've gone through puberty since. So maybe now you'll read Sin City and you read it from a man's point of view instead of a boy's point of view. I, I had puberty at age six. <laughs> got my first cigarette and my beer. Yikes. <laughs> um, Voice <let's> dropped in. <laughs> Um, how come zombie books don't have human variant covers? Well, they did. That's sort of. That's where the well, Vampirella yeah. kind of they they drew her with the pretty face as the variant. Um. Well, Zach, that was the, that was. Go ahead. Oh, so Zach says, does, "Does Dynamite make anything that isn't a limited series? <laughs> Do they have any ongoings?" The crossover is well, yeah. Dynamite right now has the Christopher Priest book that's been going on forever. The manga, uh, that's for Vampirella, I think he's writing. Uh, Red Sonia, it's usually they go up to 25 issues. Um, if they're lucky, 
uh, Vampiro, Purgatory, anything that's crossover from like Chaos Comics or anything else, or anything else, they're usually like five, five issues long. So the answer to that is, just like Marvel Comics, no. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is a limited series. Um, like the the nineteen eighty two Red Sony is a one shot. Sony Universal, I think it's going to be like six issues, maybe five. That one has. There's like three ongoing Sonya books right now. Unlike DC or Superman, <laughs> it's like anything else. How, how is Dynamite selling three Red Sonya books? Don't ask me. Oh, maybe four. I don't think I saw Red Sonya. I saw like, in, is it Invincible Red Sonya? Invincible Red Sonya is new with Amanda Connor and her husband uh, Jimmy Palmati. Yeah, there's Invincible Red Sonya. There's just regular Red that's Sonya. A, that, that's oh, a, apparently that's a Red Sonya, Red Sonya 1982. That's a one shot. Oh, it's a one shot. Yeah. Then there's Sonya that's, Versal. That's a limited uh, thing miniseries. Red and uh, Vampirella is an uh, ongoing a priest. Now that's a new one coming out. Is the black and white oh, as we goodness. anthology? Another Red Sonia book. Yeah, Invincible Red Sonia. Yeah, huh. that's too many Red Sonia books. This yeah. over oversaturating your market. Um, Jesus Thoris has been going on for a while too. I mean, the, the Sacred Six is a is a kind of crossover thing. Uh, I think there's also by priests, and it has all the vampire people like crossing crossing. Oh, here we go. Kiss is back. I I I don't ever oh. understand why people want Kiss comics, but apparently there's an oh, audience. Lyra, Vincent Price. Apparently there is an audience. Well, wasn't there like a bunch of Avenger books back in the past couple of years? Like been going on. There's Savage Avengers, the Avengers, and then like. Well, that's that. Yeah. That makes sense, though. Marvel's the biggest company, the biggest comic company, and they got this thing called the MCU. So, it makes sense that Mar. I mean, not that I like the exploitation of it, but you know, but like Dynamite's small. Like to even get to like, oh, let's go see this new series. I got to scroll way down, and this list is by order of popularity. So, is it? Oh, and this is I number. And this is a this is a number one. Where do you where do you see it's uh? Well, you're, okay, sorting by most pulled. Okay, that's why. Yeah, it's not order. It's not po- like what sold only, only on on the website. Yes, it's just yeah. order of popularity by people who use the site. So yeah, okay. But my point is, it's still an indicator. Like if you're way down here, you're not a number one book. Um, I just started using that feature for the pulled thing. I never really used. It. I just use it to see what's coming out. Yeah, I mean that's what I use it too. But it's just it's kind of yeah. interesting to know. Um. You know, it makes sense that like Batman is going to be up here. That's a popular book. Like well, DC exactly. like, six Batman books because Batman sells. It doesn't make no. sense for Dynamite to have that many. Books and they're already. all out of continuity. <laughs> <sighs> I don't even get me started on that. <laughs> uh... Iron Man's back to being crappy again. That Jeff McKay book, I, the annual was actually really good. Uh... I I good contrast. It's like. To what uh, I think it's Campbell's writing Iron Man. Oh, Breen's oh, leaving us. Good night, Eric. He's still here. I thought he left. Like, oh, gotta go to bed. He can't stay up this just, late. Just leave your phone running, Eric. Have it open. Just turn it down low, and we'll help you fall asleep. And Doug Johnson, the thing that's killing me for Invincible Red Sonia is the art. Yeah. The stories are I, all right, I guess. They're, I can't. I can't. They're typical the for Red Sonia. Oh my gosh! I got like their art was on was usually the same. We have them writing, they're drawing, basically drawing Red Sonia like they drew Harley Quinn. Yeah, and, and it just doesn't work for me. It, it's it's doable for certain types of Harley Quinn stories. I mean, Amanda Connor, she she should be writing. She should be drawing like Archie style books, right? Yeah. That I, I, that's fine. Like, I'm not really trying to dog on her art. It's just people who are buying Red Sonia books, for the most part, <laughs> are not buying it because they want Amanda Connor style art. No, we want to see a hot, busty babe chopping up people's limbs into the guy screaming, Oh my God! That's what we want. No? Um, I, American Vampire 1976. I cannot stress those books. That's the third volume, the third final volume from Scott Snyder. And all of it. 
Man, you are hot on those books. That's all he talks about these days when, behind the scenes. Is it's Van, probably vampire, the best vampire, DC, vampire. That's probably the best, the by the best DC comic book right now is the American Vampire. Well, that I cannot argue since there's no DC <laughs> books worth buying in my eyes. I mean, I was buying Jurgens, Bam, and Beyond, and they got rid of that. And Hawkman was canceled just just because they wanted to bring in more books that nobody cares like like Rorschach. No one's reading that. Rorschach. No one, no one talks about Tom King books. No one, but they continue to just like. You talk about crappy is. Well, I, I don't know, but, but look, he's four or five. He's the seventh most popular book here. So Maybe there are clearly fans, right? It's the seventh most pulled <sighs> book. So I think these are these are diehard Rorschach fans. They don't care it's Tom King. They care it sucks. They're just like they have to be loyal. That's all I can think of. Like, you know, even I like do you think Rorschach's Trump, that writing, do you think Rorschach's that big of a character? He's like wasn't he like the the like the parody version of um Batman? Well he was the satire of Batman. But like Yeah, yeah. He yeah, I mean he's definitely the most popular of the Watchmen characters, I would say, but I if he was that popular, I think D C would be a milking Rorschach series a lot like, a long time ago. He, like people like the question. I don't hear hear people talking about the question unless it's Jimmy. He's like, "Oh, I love that." And it's like, or, or anybody else, you know. Just, I don't hear anything about the question. So I would say uh, Rorschach would be out of their popularity with you know, with the question with Vic Sage. Now, now th this is now, but probably back then in the eighties, Vic Sage was probably being written awesome. Oh, probably. But, but, yeah, but like you don't hear anything about. It. You don't see many mention any books. If anything, you see Raymond or Amy Montoya being the question because uh -huh. it killed her off. <laughs> but uh, Ant Twelve from Image Comics, that's from Eric Larson, is finally finishing up his '90s series about a female superhero who looks like a giant red ant. Jungle Fantasy Five, yeah. found this. Right? Yeah. Dang it, Breen Labs. I was going to ask him if he picked up the Archie book and all. Man, you get to the bottom of the barrel down here, and it's just like, look at these comics. <laughs> Some of them, I know, I, I, I never see them though. Like the Phantom, I've never seen any comic book stores I go to, and they're look at. Oh, that's 1, probably because they they probably only or get them to order. Most of these comics will never, you know, hit the shelves. Like, they, do they have a website I can order right from the actual place? Just get a direct mailer because, like, that would probably get free to them. You know. Well, you just tell your comic book store. There's just too many comics, like. Venkman, there's 500 comics that come out every month. Even if your store ordered one of every copy or every you know issue, they wouldn't have the shelf space to put these books. So, I mean, most, most of these aren't going to sell. The people that want no. them, at least like in my store, the people that want them, they just put them on their pull list and then they get ordered specially for them. Um, Emperor, commendative. Yeah. I don't know what that okay. is, but... Must be is it a reprint, maybe, of the original first? Uh, probably, series? probably something like that. I know, I, I know, I picked the Red Sonia one to reprint for the Marvel. Maximally. Oh, here's a comic. Why are you not getting Super Babes? I haven't seen. It. <laughs> oh, that's that's isn't that the femme? I don't know what this is. It just says Super I, Babes. I, got... I was glad to laugh at it. No, um... that's uh, that's uh, femme force, whatever they are. It's from the eighties, there's only an independent book. All right. Speaking of FemForce, a uh, good segue into comic book deals. Right now, um, Humble Bundle is a place I like to check out once in a while. If you are a Power Rangers fan, um, right now there's a big Humble Bundle for lots of Power Rangers books. Um, like, maybe all of them? <laughs> there's a shit ton of books here. Um, Some of those I've actually seen in dollar bins. Let's see. And so yeah, for so for pay at least twenty five dollars humble bundle. In case you guys don't know, it's a charity thing. It's mostly for software video games, but they do books too from time to time, and um, you can get uh, digital copies of these books. For yours to own, you get the files. Oh, it's, and it's a pay what you want. And you pay what you want, but you have to pay a minimum to get the reward. They incentivize yeah. you, um, but it's for charity. So if you want to pay more to go to charity, you can do that. Um, and you can get stuff now. Looks like they're I giving was... all the recent issues of the new series, plus you get the trade paperbacks. So 
after this first group here, this is all trades, all trades. Like, so I would say if that's you're a lot all, of trades. I think that's every Power Ranger book. If they're giving you all those, I would say at least give them thirty-five bucks. Look at oh. that! All these trades. So, if you're a person who's like, yeah, I kind of want to try Power, like, here you go. And it's <laughs> it's all, all digital too. So yeah, it's like. Um, so. Can you imagine paying 30, 30, 35 dollars for like physical copies? All that. There you go. Oh man, yeah. I mean, so <laughs> I like to do this. Be I, I did this a while back for um, Dynamite. Dynamite had a sale like this, and I got nice. all of the boys, like every issue of the boys at that point, and then all of the Project Superpowers books. Plus, now, there was a couple of other throw-ins as well, and it, I paid twenty-five bucks. So worth it to do these humble bundles. Um, is that not is that only for that site? Or can you download them to your thing? Is the app? Yeah, you get um you get a a PDF and or a CBZ file of the books. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, these are these are yours. You download them. Sweet. So you don't have to like go to the, you know, go to this site to read them if you want to. You can yeah, just like you... read them from you know, from your your uh, whatever you download your device. Yeah. So the way that it'll work is you'll like you'll you have to have a humble bundle account which is free to sign up whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Humble Bundle keeps a record of everything that you've ever bought. So when you win, like, not you win, but when you pay the thing, you get your thing, it sends you a link to get your download. But that link stays in your, like, history. So if, if like, just say, for example, you downloaded these and on your laptop or something, and then your laptop fell into a river, um, and you're like, oh, I lost all my book. Oh, what do I do now? You could just go and download them again. Um, so it's a cool thing. Uh, same thing with video games. Um, most of the time they'll just give you a steam code, um, or something like that, but, uh, it, it works out really good. The other big sale that's going on right now is comiXology, which is the place I usually go is having a green arrow sale. Now I, I personally not a big green arrow guy. Um, everyone's miles may vary on the green arrow, but this sale is great cray cray and yes i just said cray cray and brought it back um look at this uh like for here the the entire kevin smith green arrow run dollar 69 now i have the discount because i'm a member so it might be like a dollar 99 if you're not a member but still like under two bucks um some of these like you can look at the price like the the deluxe rebirth uh, set here normally twenty four ninety nine dollar sixty nine. Just these prices are like ninety five percent off. So if you're a person so, who's like, I want to read a bunch of Green Arrow, it's cool and for cheap. Boom, here you go. <laughs> um, so you have you have a limited option. So say you bought like half the comic books you're on here. Like these are a limit how many you could have for you know access to, or is it doesn't make difference. Well, Unlimited is a different thing. Unlimited is like Netflix. Like you pay a monthly fee and then you just have access. And it'll say Unlimited like on the comic here is like a little stripe. Yeah, okay. So I can – you can see it have a button that says borrow. So oh, yeah. I can borrow any of these books that are Unlimited anytime I want and read them. I don't have to pay yeah, the, for them. The other ones, are, other ones are like additional money you got to pay. If you are an Unlimited member, you also get an additional 15% discount on any uh, comics you buy. So, so they're not really $1.69. So if you're not a member, this will probably say a dollar ninety nine, okay, instead of a dollar sixty nine. So I was just putting that out there in case someone was like, well, I don't understand why mine's different, but um, <laughs> he's but got the hook up. That's why <laughs> this is the one. Actually, I do. Ha oh, I did. I'm, I'm gonna do this right now. As a matter of fact, uh, nope. Come on, comic thing. Okay, so I'm gonna add this to cart, and I'm gonna add this one to cart. So this is the <laughs> entire Kevin Smith Green Arrow run. Mm -hmm. Um, which, by the way, there's two books I noticed. There's another Kevin Smith Green Arrow one, same price, but it's only like because I guess he did two different runs on Green Arrow. This one is the complete one, I think. I actually I should double check. One might um, be a trade. One is no. one is the complete, which has like all 15 issues that he did. Yeah, this one. The other one is one of his runs that had 10 of the issues. So in the same price, yeah. like you might as well get the one that's more complete because the sale price is the same. Um, and they have some older runs too, which I was, Oh, well, look at that. They got like, uh, old, like old Grell ones. 
Yeah, I'll get right, right down the line too. So these would be the ones to get if you were like new to Green Arrow, I'd imagine, is the Mike Grell. Um and I guess the two. So yeah, I guess I mean whatever era floats your boat. I mean, look, there's how many entries here? Three hundred and forty two items. So there's probably a lot. And a Lenny Diggle. I am not a massive Green Arrow guy, so I'm not. I, if I was, I'd just be like, bye, 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 bye. Um, I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder how that Andy Diggle Green Arrow year one is. I don't know. Um, but I like this one is the Jeff Lemire, so people recommended the Jeff Lemire War of the Clans run. Mm -hmm. And then I'm a Kevin Smith fan, so. Um, well, Green Lantern Green Arrow, I've heard people like the Denny O'Neill. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, Denny O'Neill's an old-time great. So, yeah. so there you go. Three dollars and fifty-two cents. Proceed to check out. Boom, 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 boom. You're watching, Log in. You're watching me buy <laughs> comics in real time with Ash on Comics. This is pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He got this off a YouTube video. <laughs> I did promise that we were going to get into the, the book, so now people can see. You can fast forward to this point, but if you're hearing my voice, you're already fast forwarded to here. Got to wet my palate. We're going to be reading two issues of Thor God of Thunder tonight. I am continuing the series because everyone seemed to be really enjoying it. Um, this is a book that was recommended to me by Jimmy a lifetime ago, it feels like. And he's been very insistent on me reading this for the longest time. And I always Can't promised wait. him that I would. And uh, I, I thought the first story arc was only five or six issues, which it was. But technically, just like Hawkman, you don't want to read the first six issues of Hawkman and stop. You really need to read the first 12 issues. So I want to give credit where it's due and give it a full shake and chance. And we've all been enjoying it for the, as far as I'm aware. So I was like, I'm going to read the rest of this God Bomb, which is the second arc, and uh, finish it up and make sure that... Because uh, Jimmy has been a good follower of the channel. He's one of my oldest followers on this channel he's been supportive and so i didn't want to give it the half ass try i can't wait to get the issue 25 i don't know if i'll get that far we'll see <laughs> um look at those numbers jump up we're in double digits again as soon as you put the comic on the screen there we go yeah i'll be quiet and you can get going i don't know if your timer has left no the timer went off okay then we're done yeah let's go so let's get going um, I'll I'll read the Thor parts in Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> so as a disclaimer, as I always go, uh, I am not a professional voice actor, uh, and I do read. I am reading this book cold, which means I have not read it ahead of time before. Um, it's brand new to me, and I also read it frame by frame. So sometimes it's hard to see where word bubbles are going. You'll see once we get going. Um, if you've watched the show before, you completely already know all this and you see how I mess up all the time, which is why I give this disclaimer. So always remember kids, you get what you pay for. Hope you enjoy the show and here we go. Gore, the God butcher has vowed to kill all gods through all ages across an entirety of the cosmos. That's my phone. Sorry. Um, in the distant past, young Thor narrowly escaped Gore. The God Butcher has not forgotten the Thunder God that got away. At the end of time, Gore's legions had crippled Asgard, and old King Thor battled along among the ruins. Sorry, alone among the ruins. Waiting only for death, just as all seemed lost, the Thor of the present arrived having followed the bloody footsteps of Gore into this dismal future. Will the combined strength of two Thors be enough to defeat the Butcher of Gods? Where Gods Go to Die by Jason Aaron and Asad Rabik Wake up! God of Thunder, I'm not finished with you yet. Wake up. Ah. 
Hmm? Ready for another go around already, God of Thunder? Thor? He's not dead. Who's not dead? No one. Don't worry your pretty little head. My pretty little head has been smashing faces and breaking noses since I was old enough to see straight. I'm not a shield maiden, not some sheep, or sorry, I'm a shield maiden, not some sheep herder's daughter. Tell me, who are we to murder? You should know I make war like I make love, naked and in a berserker rage. Thor? There's no one here. There's no one coming. Trolls take my eyes. I'm acting like a child frightened by his own shadow. Eight days since I killed that god butcher bastard, and I still can't get him out of my head. I wish to dream no more this night. That means you will have to keep me awake until the morn. That I can do, my lord. For the glory of Asgard. Iceland, 893 AD. It was not so much a scream that rang out through the Viking village of Kolkumyar? Kul Kul Kulkum Jesus, that's a mouthful. Kolkumyar. Sorry, <laughs> you get what you paid for. Uh, the village of Kolkumyar, as it was a cry of battle. The first of many that would be heard that night. The night the shadows themselves came out to murder. Asgard, many millennia from now. So, you really are me? Uh, the older, wiser, and more exquisitely bearded you, yes. What's happened to my eye? And is that the arm of the destroyer? Are you going to simply gawk at me like some half-witted Hercules? Or may we see to our business? You act as if you've never time-traveled before. Many times. But I've never been waiting for myself once I got there. This, this Asgard. What's happened here? Where is everyone? One question at a time, boy. Let's answer the one you asked when you first arrived. Where is the God Butcher? This... This is Hildeskalf, the high seat of Odin. No one but the Allfather himself is allowed in here. You are right about that. You, I mean, we, are the Allfather? I am the Allfather. You are still just, what are you again? An Avenger, Guardian of the Galaxy, the head of that ridiculous little order of yours. Have you moved to the, to the sun and become a cosmic god cop yet? What? No. Oh, then forget I said anything. Wait, if you truly are me, then shouldn't you remember this happening? Remember me coming here and meeting m yourself? I can hardly remember to tackle my own, sorry, I can hardly remember to buckle my own trousers, can I? And this is time travel we're talking about. There are all manner of annoying rules governing this sort of thing. I've always hated time travel, and you always will. What are we looking for? They're gone. Those damn black berserkers. They're really gone. Gone where? Gore has called them home by the looks of it. For the first time in 900 years, the skies around Asgard are empty. The siege is broken. By my beard, we still got a chance. I go to make myself ready for war. You should do the same, young Thunder God. 
I'm ready now. Let us leave at once. Gods could be dying while we tarry. We will die if we are not prepared for what we will face. This is no mere Ragnarok come upon us, boy. This is an ending beyond all known endings. This is Apocalypse Unparalleled. There is a chamber in the East Wing, just past the statues of the kings, that you've never entered, have you? No. Odin always said it was for the Allfathers only. Yes, well, now, on the eve of your extinction, you will find all that you need inside. Make yourself ready and meet me at the docks. This could not be right. Perhaps this is one of those alternate futures that the X-Men are always going on about. Surely I do not grow up to become my father. What could I possibly need to make myself ready? I am ready now, ready to pound the butcher of gods into the dirt once and for... Well, I suppose one drink wouldn't hurt. So the room that Odin keeps all to himself <laughs> that no one else is supposed to enter is just full of ale and <laughs> liquor. Well, of course he would, because otherwise Thor would just be a drunk and be a fat No gut. one else is allowed in here. <laughs> uh, sorry. Boom. Ugh. Ugh. So here we are back in the past. He sent you, didn't he? The God Butcher. I knew he wasn't dead. Where is the one-armed coward? Thor would cleave whatever's left of him. Speak, you bloodless dogs. Where is your master? Where the... Foom. Hell? Ah, at last... My favorite Thor. Welcome. Welcome to the place where gods go to die. Gore! This time when I cut you, you will stay dismembered. Oof. Wham! Thum! Now, where were we when we last met, before those Viking friends of yours interrupted us in that cave? Many millennia from now, the black world of gore. Ah, oh, yes. I believe that was it. I am sorry, my sons. Sorry I failed you. I pray for your forgiveness and your strength. If the children yet live, I will find them. So swears the king of Asgard. Thor, are you ready to spill your blood across the end of time? Are you ready to die as the stars die with you? Are you ready to laugh in the face of the twilight of the gods? Aye, Thor is ready. But I still need answers. What has happened to Asgard? Gore, the god butcher, happened. Nine hundred years ago, he came here out of time, spewing black berserkers, an endless army of the beasts. We held them at bay as long as we could, but as our numbers dwindled, his powers grew, and ultimately, I was all that was left. He killed them? He killed all of Asgard? He took them, enslaved them. He has his own world, a dead, blackened planet at the edge of space. He's building something there, I know not what. For all these years, all I could do was watch from afar. He's kept me trapped here, alone, 
for nine centuries, always surrounded by those damn berserkers, unable to break free, unable to die. I thought Asgard would be my prison for eternity. But then you came. You have renewed my strength, young god of thunder. Seeing myself as I once was, though beardless and dim-witted, nevertheless fills me with vigor. For the first time in centuries, I feel like a god again. Who the hell's talking here? Can't tell. Oh, okay. I dare say I even feel the rumblings of the Thor Force within me once again which I had long since thought forever spent. Thor Force? You mean the Odin Force? You wield the awesome power of the Odin Force? We call it the Thor Force now, boy. And have for ten thousand years. I have wielded it far longer than that old man ever did. And now it is mine once more. Time out. Time out. Time out. Jason Aaron, this is what happens when you don't have an editor or you have shitty editors at Marvel. Jason Aaron created the Avengers 1 billion BC. That means that, and, and Odin was a part of those Avengers, 1 billion. So 1 billion years ago, Odin was alive and in a stupid Avengers team that wouldn't even exist. Anyways. 10,000 years is but a blink of an eye compared to a billion years. Anyway, sorry, Jason Aaron, caught ya. Moving on. Sorry, Jimmy, you're probably not listening anyway. This is our chance. Gore has called his minions home. The fiend dares us to come after him. And so we shall, hammers in hand. Are you with me, Thor? To the end, Thor. Then give me a drink of that ale and let us fly. For honor and the realm eternal, for div vengeance divine, the last charge of the armies of Asgard, the last ride of the gods of thunder. And so, Skith Blathnir most vaunted of the longships of Asgard, set sail across the cosmic seas, with its cargo of enchanted Uru hammers, All Father's Ale, and the greatest collection of Thors ever assembled. And yet, it would not be enough. Take him away. I've had my fun. Now you get to have yours, young prince. Take our new arrivals to the construction site and put them all to work in the mines. All except Thor. I want him with the builders at the summit. I want him there at the moment all work is finally completed. See that Thor drives in the last nail. The present, omnipotent city, nexus of all the gods. Well, don't just stand there wasting my time and breathing my air. Speak. Or can you not even do that correctly, god of the watch? The Communications Division has tried contracting the world of Kronux as you asked, Lord Librarian, but without success. The God Priests of the Ward have dispatched dozens of space ravens and comet probes to where they believe Kronux to be hidden, but all have gone unanswered. They suggest it in the future that you refrain from burning the books you've been entrusted with protecting especially those containing the only known directions to hidden worlds. A billion gods in this city, and I'm the only one who's not absolute waste of divinity. What else? Oh, useless one. 
I have communed with the surveillance spirits. Your library was the only division infiltrated. I suggest you re review your own obviously substandard security enchantments. And what of the Department of Death and Taxes? Did you go to them as I asked? Their blood auditors have indeed reported a stench of god blood in the corner of the cosmos where Kronix is believed to be, but there is no way to... And no word from Thor. The Asgardian? No, none at all. He's gone. Lo Thor's lost in the forevers now, just like Gore. Will that be all your esteemed librarianship? My godson is creating his first world today, and I would very much like to be... Call the Parliament into session. What? Can... Can you even do that? Tell them, if they don't want the pages of their family history ripped from every book known in the heavens, they'll do as I say. You, what is your name again? Shadrach, god of baubles and ballerinas. And what do you know of god butchers, Shadrach the Mad? Nothing. There is no need to know anything. It will all be over soon. All of this, all of us. It's better this way. I shouldn't have helped him, I know, but I knew this would, way would be better. Helped him? Helped him how? No, no, never mind. I'm merely Shadrach, god of kittens and coconuts. I don't... Stop lying to me. You're the god of this, the god of that. Who are you really? God of pancakes and tambourines? Scrum. If you really are a god, then your name and image are somewhere in this library. If you make me dig out the book myself, I will beat you senseless with it. Do you hear me? It's better this way, I swear. Better than how he was doing it. Tearing us apart one by one, he made me watch... I only helped him so that I wouldn't have to watch anymore, so no one would. He came to me. He made me show him how to build it. Please, it will all be better this way. Believe me. Start making sense, damn it. Tell me what you're hiding. Tell me who you are. I, I am only Shadrach, god of... god of... By all that's unholy... God of bombs. Um, to be continued. Really? I thought God bomb was a metaphor. <laughs> I, I, like the god, no, that, like the god that, butcher. I I didn't expect a literal bomb. I thought god bomb is what he does in the bathroom. Sort of. <laughs> That's what I do in the bathroom. <laughs> Unholy, holy. Um. There's a god of bombs. Hey, is that Jason Aaron up there on the left? Um. Wait <laughs> on the. I don't know. Uh, kind of it could be him. It's hard to tell. Uh, I think it is. That, that whole Thor force has weird. Like I was just reading Walt Simonson's of um, Searcher Saga from Mighty Thor, and they have they they see how Odin got his Odin force was actually from his two bro brothers sacrificing their lives to keep uh, the because they stumbled upon Surtur to keep his realm closed, so they gave the reign of their powers to Odin, and that's how it became, like, the Odin Force, how it became so powerful. Now, as far as anything else other than that, I don't know. Like, like Thor has only just been able to do control lightning. Well, he's the All-Father now, so... Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, he I, was... 
in the and like in the cartoons, I know in some stuff like you know I've seen stuff like it was at, uh, when he becomes like he takes over from Odin, like he's like, he absorbs Odin's like kind of powers. That's what he did in like Kate's book, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, I never liked the Odin Force, and I like it even less when it's called the Thor Force. But I mean, if it's, called, if it's called Thor Force because he absorbed Odin's Force powers. Well, I just don't like the Odin like that. Yeah, yeah, it's not oh, like Odin's not even the original All Father. Yeah, it was Thor. Yeah, um, Thor had three sons. But I mean, if you if you called it like. The All Father. I mean, it sounds stupid to say the All Father Force, but something like that makes more sense. Yeah. But I don't know. I just Odin was the All Father because he was Odin, like not because he inherited that. Yeah. Anymore. I don't know. I just I just don't like the fact like oh now Thor's the king of Asgard, so he's the All Father and he gets like Odin's powers, and I'm like. I don't know. That's just not how the mythos really worked. So I, I, I like it better when Marvel stays close to the mythos rather than, yeah, going all off on uncharted territory. And I don't really like when they do this whole stuff like, oh, we're gonna kill Asgard and we're gonna have Ragnarok and we're gonna do all this stuff, because the Marvel universe time happens really slow, right? Like the entire Marvel universe is only ten years have gone by. Like right? if there's if there's Ragnarok going. Midgard should be affected on a big scale. Everyone, like every all the books aside of this, should be affected. Right, but you know what I'm saying? Like since the Marvel yeah. Universe began, only ten years of time approximately have happened because we can age the characters, right? Like, mm-hmm. so if so, you're telling me that all this has happened. Thor's and the King of the As, like all this stuff has happened in like just a couple years. And then Thor, then Odin's going to be back. And it's like all these like massive epic storylines that these writers come in and try to tell. They would work if you could be like, like in this particular story, for example, when you isolate it and say, okay, this happened. And then like 10,000 years go by, go by. And that like you can have that happen, but you can't fit that into the continuity because continuity is, you know, super tight in just a couple of years. You can't tell a story spanning thousands of years in the Marvel continuity, right? Nope. Like you can't have Thor grow old and die and then his son takes over in the Marvel continuity because there's not enough time to yeah, do that. Is, you have to do an Elseworld and you have to like – you'd have to do like a 1610 Ultimate Universe. Yeah, and I mean you can tell like, a separate story okay. and say, okay, 10,000 years from now, Thor dies and his son takes over. You could do that, but, but you can't but do are, it – in the main yeah. continuity. No. Oh. And, and I think sometimes writers like, well, more importantly, the editors forget that <laughs> they let these weird stories go on. You're like, okay. So Ragnarok happened in the main continuity and somehow all Asgard came back from Ragnarok, which is supposed to be the end of all things. And this all happened within the span of a couple years. Yeah. At this point, nothing really matters in the main universe because like, We've seen that. We've seen that. This will be another world-changing event. All new, all different. Well, that's yeah, like we, one I thing know. I noticed in this particular <laughs> issue that Jason Aaron wrote in there. This is no mere Ragnarok. So what Jason Aaron did in this book was demean Ragnarok as just being like, oh, it's just an event. Like Ragnaroks happen all the time. You know, he he totally. He yeah, he totally reduced Ragnarok to nothing. In this book, like, and so setting up the actual Ragnarok in the comics, then didn't mean anything. Yeah. Oh well, it still was fun. I'm nitpicking. Um, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know where, you, where you left off in the comments. I think I found. We're gonna start here. Ed Brewer's in the house. What's up, Ed Brewer? He says, "How much is it to be an unlimited member? It is five ninety nine per month." Which incidentally, uh, RDV, I signed, <laughs> I signed up for this thing. Uh, do you know? Have you heard of Circle K? Gas station. It's it's like Seven Eleven. It's like the poor man's Seven um, <laughs> Eleven. 
it's called Circle K. They're big in California. I don't know if they're all over the country, but um, so Circle K has this thing, and um, they uh, I, 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 th- I was fascinated by it. It's a subscription service for fountain drinks. So I signed up for it today. It's five ninety nine a month, same price as Comixology Unlimited. So for five ninety nine a month, it gives me one free fountain drink of my choosing every day. So potentially 31 fr- drinks. Uh, and that can be a, a soft drink. It can be a slushy, or it can be a coffee. Um, and it's up to 64 ounces. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to try this out. $5.99. Um, and it's pretty cool because you pay in cash. It's not like yeah. a subscription like your card. Because I told my buddy about this, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, that's how they get you. You, you sign up for this service, and it charges your credit card, and you forget that your subscription. <laughs> and then, like, three years from now, you're like, what? What? Why am I being billed five ninety nine? dollars um, and, and it's totally true. Like, but I, So I signed up for it today, and I didn't have to give a credit card or anything. You just enter your phone number, and you get you pay them five ninety nine in cash or whatever way you want to pay. And then I guess what happens is after it expires – you just pay them another five ninety nine, and they just re up you. So I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess that works." Because I have to come in to get my drink anyway. So it's pretty cool. I don't even have to worry about renewing it or anything, like or or canceling. Because that was my first thing. I was like, "How do I cancel this?" <laughs> I've, uh, I've never really done anything like that. Like Speedways are on here, like near Super America is what they used to be called. Um, you get those like rewards things. You go on there, you you know, you get after you buy so much and all uh-huh. stuff, so they get points. Yeah, Dude, there's quick, several places quick, that do that. Quick Trip, you know, does that too now. It's like, you know, right at the pump. I'll, I'll be, like, it's weird. They have, like, news at the pump. It's like, here's the weather, and here's this. It's while you're pumping your gas. And, like, touch the screen to print off a coupon to get, a you know, off our Karuba coffee. It's like, or whatever is currently in there. I was just like, just let me pump it quiet. Why do I have all these freaking things? The, oh, yeah, the you're, ta- you're talking about the, the ads. <laughs> yeah, the, well, or, or the pump on a TV, a little TV on the screen on the pump. It's like, and then it's like, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just weird to me. Like they do have one thing. It's cool. It's like, this is the word of the day. I'm like, I'm learning old school words that are never used in this day and age. It's like, what? it's like, it's basically like if I wanted to like brush up on my, my dolphin speak. Cause these are, bur- I guarantee you, these are words that you, you're never gonna hear anybody use at all. Yeah, the most common word used today is LL. <laughs> but I I think it's a really cool thing. So basically, today I paid five ninety nine, and for thirty days, I'm just gonna get free drinks. And and the cool thing is, this is maybe not big for you guys, but anyone else, but they they're allowing refills again. And I was like, I can refill. Do you drink um, that much? No. Well, so one thing I do is I have this giant. Uh, Bubba. It's it's not Bubba, um, but it's it's one of those steel, um, yeah. double walled steel things. Um, I really love these things; they're amazing. Um, and this thing will literally keep my drink cold, like for the next day. I can wake up the next day; it'll still have ice in it. And so, yeah, I mean, I just fill that thing up, and then your little your little Yeti, <laughs> my little Yeti. You know, this this one's pretty big, but I have like all different sizes. Like I have for ones around yeah. the house, or I have like a twenty four ounce one from around the house. Um I just like keeping my drink cold. Um and like I can fill it up with tea and then at night and keep it by my bed. So if I could wake up in the middle of the night or whatever I want to drink like it's cold. Um so anyways. I just thought that was really cool, five ninety nine. Because you pay dude, like big gulps now are like two dollars a piece. So I don't. I don't get gas station soda. If I do, it's like I buy a, a bottle of Mountain Dew or whatever. It's I know room. you're a big McDonald's guy, and I appreciate that too. But sometimes you just want, you know, convenient, cheap. You're not looking. Yeah, but even then, I don't get it from like the fountain machines. Like I just get the can. Oh, I prefer the fountain, unless the fountain's bad. I have been to some places where it's like, <laughs> dude, you need to turn up your syrup because it's. This shit tastes like shit. Well, there's uh, no, yeah, yeah, or, or sometimes I get it all syrup. There's no salsa water. The routes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, this place, this particular Circle K, is pretty decent, and it's real convenient. It's like right on the corner where I have to drive by every day. Like it's just, um, 
and they had a they had voltage and normally I don't like voltage from the tap because it's not mixed right and it's it's usually it's like not enough syrup and I was like ah oh. so I was like but I feel in the mood for it so I tried it and it was good so I was like okay right on I was happy oh uh, so you keep saying Circle K I'm just gonna say sixty nine dudes sixty nine dudes <laughs> it's it's a freaking it's Circle K. <laughs> So now oh, I get wait. unlimited soda and unlimited comics. Yay. What's the uh, prices for, for your soda though? Like I get like the cheapest I've seen is like sixty nine cents here. Well seven eleven's doing a thing right now for all summer, seventy nine cents for a regular big gulp. But if you want like any of the other sizes, normal price. And so like the super big gulp's like two, almost two bucks. Um so which one which one do you get with your with your seven eleven pizzas? I usually only ever just get a big gulp because I'm like, I'm not paying twice the price for like 15 more ounces of soda. Right. Um, and plus it's like, it kind of limits me. I mean, I have to admit like it forces me not to overindulge. Um, but yeah, I haven't been getting the pizza. The pizza's have been on sale too for two for two for a dollar. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, it's tempting, man. I, now, can you like they? Do you go out uh, the area the pre slices, or do you actually go up there like, hey, can you heat this up for me? Like, how does well, that when work? I get when I get slices, well, when I get slices, I look at it and I go, does it look fresh <laughs> and good, all day. or it's been there all day? <laughs> I I honestly I, ver- I get it very rarely, and it's usually like if I'm on my way home from work or something, like I'm doing something, I'm like, I just want to like put something in my belly. Cause I'm kind of hungry, but I'm not eating dinner yet. So I'm like, I'll get a slice. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, it's not the greatest pizza. I would never like people have misquoted me and been like, Ash loves some of pizza. I'm like, <laughs> it's no, a, it's, a, it's, it's a thing. Just, I'll play on a shirt. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's edible and convenient. It's like eating frozen burritos. Like I don't do them because I love them. It's edible and convenient. And, I try to make that sound as a slight against Little Caesars because literally I would I would rather have Seven Eleven pizza than Little Caesars. You can get a, can, Little Caesars, man. It's good. You can get you a can whole get... you can get a whole pizza for five bucks. Um. Yeah, sorry. I can do Little but, Caesars like cheesy bread and a regular like I'll do that at Little Caesars, but I won't. Oh man, I had this guy so gotta order cheesy bread. Oh my gosh, was that like buttery and they put a lot of Parmesan cheese on it too? I was just like, dang. Like that alone was just like worth like three or four bucks. Right. Man. Melissa says so, Thor became the new Odin in the future. Um, no, that's the problem, Melissa. And this is the thing I don't like. Odin is not a mantle. Just like Thor is not a mantle. This is my problem when Jane Foster became Thor. It's not a mantle. It's a person. You can't become Odin. Odin is a person. Now the all father maybe you could argue as a mantle um but i don't i don't recall boar being the all father so if Bo- if if odin's father wasn't the all father then why would you know it's not a pa- anyways that was just my comment on that um thor looks badass i can agree on that uh let's see rdv says oh that's you you said walt simonson's mighty thor odin got the odin force from being gifted for powers from his brothers who sacrificed their lives to lock the realm to searcher's domain. Now you're talked about that. Why are you typing and talking about stuff? I was typing while you're while you're reading it. <laughs> no, but you said it vocally too. Anyways, okay. um, moving on. Ash is a snob, says Jimmy. That's something I won't deny. Uh, Zach says, "Is it a yeti?" No, it is not a yeti. Um, yeti is just a way to pay too much. I, I don't recommend getting yetis. Um, you can get other brands that are exactly the same thing because they're all manufactured in China, <laughs> the same. Um, and who gets, their, one. who gets their name sound? This particular one is called Mana, M A N N A, and it got it from Costco. And it's super. Che- it was super cheap, man. If you're gonna get these, by the way, get them at Costco, whatever the brand is. Um, the other brand I have is Thermoflask. Those are my small ones. And then I have um, my one that's like a cup because these are all like bottles. They have like a like a like a lid with a screw top, like a bottle. Um, and then I have one that's like a cup um, with, you know, 
and it's a big cup with a lid. You know what I'm talking about. That one, it looks like a Yeti, mm-hmm. and that one is Takaya. Takaya is, I really like the brand too, but the, honestly, this Mana one keeps it the best. And it might be because it's so big and there's like so much cold liquid in there. It's, it's help keeping it cool. I don't know. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you realize if you have anything that says made in Taiwan, you got to cross it out and you got to write China off above it? No, no, that, that's the opposite. Now we we say if it's made in China, we say it's made in West Taiwan. Or uh, cool, because uh, Taiwan's not a country anymore; it's just China. No, no, no. China is West Taiwan. Why is it just the West part? Because it's west of Taiwan. I guess you can say that. Unless, uh, unless you're some sort of Biden supporter. I don't support anybody named Biden. And by that, I mean China supporter, because this is a like, And if I was a Biden supporter, I forgot. <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> uh, Jimmy says, snob of food, Ash. That was the context. You are also correct in that context as well. Um, but I am a snob who can slum it. That's the one thing that I, I'm not ashamed of being a snob because I'm not pretentious. Right. Like I, I appreciate good things and I, especially if I'm paying for quality, then I expect quality, but I can eat a McDonald's burger. Like I can eat 7-Eleven pizza, but if 7-Eleven was charging me $20 for a pizza, I'd be like, this is fucking garbage. Right. I go to round table, pay $20 for a pizza. I was like, oh, it was good. So that's kind of like the difference. I, I can slum it. I can eat the cheapy frozen burritos top ramen i can eat crap but if it's 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 like what you pay for you know and like marvel comics if they were free i wouldn't bag on them as much right but when they're charging you 3.99 4.99 5.99 the, n- the next venom issue is going to be 9.99 you know what you better you can, freaking you better deliver you can beg on how bad they are for but the fact that marvel's still at 3.99 and dc is going more expensive Oh right, know. yeah. DC's. D, remember, DC used to be. We're holding the line at two ninety nine. They were the one that used to make fun of Marvel, and now they're the most expensive. We're going for six dollars. I'm like, and Marvel's like, you know, we might have some crappy comics, but or at least we're cheaper. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I am. I am definitely a snob, but I am not a stuck up snob. I guess would be the way to put uh, it. I guess people are complaining about the red bar at the bottom of this of the book here. I hate the red bar. Look at that ugly but you, thing. But, but, but you have that two on your screen. <laughs> your Ash and Life. There's a red bar there too. It's, it fits in. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a little hypocritical, isn't it? <laughs> right. Way to put but, that out. You're watching Ash on Comics live now. Michael Dell. <laughs> <laughs> Ash on Comics now. I should change the name of the show. Um,. And Jimmy says, oh, uh, then sure, I guess. I don't see a problem. It's fine. <laughs> um, let's see. <sighs> yeah, I hated that, though. I, I, I got rid of all my books. I had the, the red bars across. I was like, nope, I don't need any more. It's all done. <laughs> all right. Next book. These books are long feeling. Doesn't it feel kind of long? That's how Jimmy likes them. Oh. Ah. All right. Well, <laughs> before, before I get too far in the weeds, let us continue on our merry way, my friends. Before I have, I have a drink. Ah, oh, man. Fresh iced tea is the best. Okay, here we go. The far future, the black ocean of deep space. I grow battle-starved. How much further to the god-butcher's lair? Still a few billion light-years, but we've got a good solar wind at our backs, and ale aplenty. We've no more ale. Hell is pale bosom, boy. Go polish thine hammer or practice growing a beard before I cast thy ass overboard. Or better yet, 
Get thee to sleep. Believe me, once we make landfall on the unholy world of gore, there will be little time for relaxation. Crack. The Unholy World of Gore City of the God Slaves Mount of the God Bomb Grr! That shall be the last time you ever whip an heir to Asgard, you black-eyed wretch. Carry thine own damn rocks. Come then, you dogs of gore. This god is no man's slave. You jackass. What the hell do you think you're doing? What? Who dares lay a hand on? I dare, pretty boy. Crack. Get back to work, or I'll break both your arms and have you sent to the mines and clean boots with your tongue, since it seems thou is your strongest muscle. You would have me submit to the will of gore like a gutless troll? Never. To see such cowardice among my fellow gods fills me with shame for all divinity. Cowards? Did this just idiot boy god call us cowards? Oh, God. What? what? Read some with Thor. <sighs> what the fuck am I looking at? Okay, sorry. Red, I, red I, got, I, got, I got distracted. Hold on. Continuing. I'm in a mind to reach in through this stupid beardless face and rip out his stones. Maybe he'll be a bit less annoying as a eunuch. But it's such a handsome face. Seems a shame not to waste it. Not to mention those stones. Down, girls. You, new god, pick up your pebble and get back in line. I won't tell you again. I'm not going to let you get some poor god killed with your immature pride. The only ones who will die here today are those black-hearted lapdogs of... Tone down the braggadocio for one second and look around you, dolt. Every time you make a ruckus like this, Gore crucifies another god. If it was just you, no big loss. One less steel-headed godling in the world. But I have friends hanging on those crosses. Needog's blood. We have to. What you have to do is shut your mouth and get back to carrying heavy things now. Humph. <laughs> Still think we should have gelded him. There's something awfully familiar about this god. Tell me, what goddesses are you? We're not gods anymore, and neither are you. We're slaves now. Get used to it. And so it was that Thor Odinson of the Viking Age first met Atli, Elsieve, and Frigg Odendatir, the goddess of thunder, from an eon hence. His own future grandchildren. Damnable bunch of winces. All right, time out. So, of course, of course, of course, the it was only a matter of time before Thor was shown up by a woman. And, of course, it's his own granddaughter. <sighs> Sorry, moving on. The gods mind broken moons in silence. Voices that once spoke whilst galaxies obeyed now reduced to frightened whimpers and feeble weeping. Kings of heaven and hell who had sat atop opulent thrones now squatted in the muck with their own filth. These were gods in whose image great temples had been erected, in whose name epic wars have been waged for generations. But now... Glassy-eyed and hollow, not even they could remember who they were. That will never be me, thought the god of thunder. 
Never in a million millennia would my spirit break so utterly. But at the same time, he thought it best not to wait too many millennia to find out. What the hell is that thing, then? A bomb. The bomb that's going to kill all the gods. No bomb can kill gods, boy. Certainly not all of them. This bomb will. Gore designed it himself. You'll see soon enough, after 900 years of labor, it is almost finished. And you think this is a good thing, the killing of the gods? It will be a better world without gods. No more fear of eternal damnation or lust for eternal reward. No more hatred between believers of rival faiths. Without the lie of eternity to serve as our crutch, we will have no choice but to fi finally cherish what precious little time we have and to put our faith in only ourselves and one another. That's what Gore taught you, is it? What is he to you, child? He is everything. He is my father. Your father is a butcher and a madman. Of course you would say that. You're a god. You fear him. But I wonder how many has your father butchered? To hell with both your fathers. You should flee this world while you can, son of Gore. You and whatever family you have. Your father is going to die for what he has done with my own hands, fate willing. <clears throat> Never speak ill of my father. He is a great man, and you are but a jealous god. Open your eyes, boy. He isn't a man at all. Not any more. Get back to work, slave, before I have you crucified. Every one of you will be forgotten. Every god ever spawned. All your temples will be dust. Your holy books burned to ash. But my father's name will never die. Do you hear me, gods of man? The name of Gore the Redeemer will live forever. King Thor's snoring shook the rigging. Galaxies passed by in a blur. Thor the Avenger held the great wheel steady and called forth the solar storms and all the interstellar winds he could muster to push the flying dragon ship ever faster through the cosmic currents. Faster than the speed of light or all known laws of man. Faster than all but the boldest of gods had ever dared. Wait a second, time out. How do solar winds push you faster than the speed of light that doesn't make sense that's like having a sailing ship like a regular sailing ship and like going faster than the wind it's space gas ignite it and you go far all right it's it's he's got a gravity now it's magic we'll just let's go with that he talked to his hammer as he sailed chasing the stench of the dead gods across the spaceways. He struggled to put doubts from his mind, worries that buried within Gore's vengeful rants. There was some small ember of truth, a truth that threatened to consume him. Thor sailed on, craving combat with every ounce of his being. Combat, and just a bit of ale. Gore's god slaves worked for days on end without pause, without sleep. But every seventh day they were allowed a few moments of rest. And on the seventh day they rested. This was Gore's idea of a joke. Three more days at the most, and after that, Gore's bomb will be finished. And we'll be dead along with every other god ever born. I hate this bitch. Just FYI, moving on. 
Then we wait longer. We must take our shot. We cannot be ruled by panic. This will be our only chance. We need more time to gather weapons, to find the perfect moment. More time? Most of us have been here for centuries. There is no more time. The when we can debate, but first we must settle on the who. Who do we trust to lead the way? Who has the strength to carry the burden, knowing that even if they succeed, they will most assuredly die? If you're talking about destroying that bomb and killing the bastard Gore, then look no further. I'm your god. The eunuch? Who let him in? No offense, friend, but we don't even know who you are. I am the favorite son of Odin, the Omnipotent, heir to the throne of... Sorry, start over. I am the favorite son of Odin, the Omnipotent, heir to the throne of eternal Asgard, the lord of the storm and the god of the thunder, him before whom even Vikings bow. They call me Thor. Thor? Oh my heavens! I've been having impure thoughts about my grandfather. <laughs> Gore has been known to pull gods out of the time stream, but if you're really who you say, then you should have no trouble summoning a thunderstorm to cover our attack. Beh, he's no Thor. We're the goddesses of thunder, and even we can't summon storm in the in this miserable dung hole. I have tried, but this world is too barren. There are no storms here that answer Thor's call. Don't feel too bad. Ain't the rain god can't even make it do any more, and Gord, the wine lord, can only turn water into vinegar. We need more weapons if we're going to cross the black plain and reach that bomb. Clubs, sharp stones, whatever we can find. This bomb, can it really kill all the gods? Gore has proven himself to be many things, but a liar isn't one of them. Then, what is your plan? To destroy the bomb before it's finish. That thing is the size of a moon. How do you expect to destroy it with a few ragged slaves armed with clubs and sharp stones? For nine hundred years, we ragged slaves have mined the cores of dead stars and broken planets, building Gore's god bomb. This is every scrap of unstable matter we've been able to steal and hide over the years. He's got his bomb. We've got ours. But the question still remains. How do we get close enough to the god bomb to destroy it without being swarmed by black berserkers? We rush them. Every god who can walk all at once. It won't work. Gord's weapon is too strong. His berserkers are everywhere. Then we sneak our bomb as close as we can and detonate it by hand. That's suicide. That's the only way. One god must die for the rest to survive. Then let's see a show of hands. Which god will volunteer to... Oh, you stupid, stupid Thor. Ah. <sighs> And here again, we see Jason Aaron using the, the word Thor as if it were a mantle and not a person. Uh, it's annoying. Sorry. Moving on. One last storm. That's all I ask. If today the god of thunder must die screaming, then let the sky scream with me. Crumble. Get every god on their feet. The final battle begins now. Wait, listen. He made it rain fire. I've always wanted to make it rain fire. I'll be damned. He is Thor. 
go, Granddad, go! <sighs> Sorry. This is a little cringy. Moving on. As he raced toward his death through the rain of fire, young Thor's mind was empty of all but rage. No thoughts of Asgard or the father's love he would never live long enough to earn. No thoughts of the maidens yet to be wooed, the sagas yet to be written. That damn hammer. He would regret not having lifted that damn thunk. Boom! Did you feel that? Yes. There was a great storm in the distance, though it passed quickly. Now all I feel is pain and fire ripping through my guts. We move carefully from here on out. Our prey is near. In orbit around Gore's world, star sharks feed on the flesh of dead gods, cast into the void over centuries. Best fetch your hammer, boy. I sense something stirring, something close, something strangely familiar. Space, they're literally space sharks. Take heed, he's got a walk. Sharkoom. What just happened? You were struck in the face with a shark. That's what I thought. What manner of foul beast has Gore conjured for us this time? The foulest, I'm afraid. Is that... Yes, lucky me. Another one. Who are you, grizzled old bastards? And what is your business here? If you be slave traders, you will answer this day to... To... Father? Is that you? Boar's bones. Are you certain there isn't any ale left? Soon. Are you sure you're up for this? You just escaped from Gore's slave world, and now you're about to go marching back in? If you two old farts are up for it, then I guess that means I am as well, doesn't it? Blasted time travel. Who ever knew there was such a thing? Then arm yourself, boy, and be quick about it. I'll be topside. Don't dawdle. I know how you love to dawdle. <laughs> so I gotta pause for a second. This is Jimmy when I talk at him. And... Tell him about his youth and stuff. This is the face he makes. <laughs> uh, sorry, Jimmy, I had to. Continuing. Is that the world you just blasted yourself off of, young Thor? Aye, that's it. And the great bomb you said you destroyed? The god bomb. It would have been right. By all the pits of the hell, it's untouched. I didn't so much as scratch the damn thing. Then let us hope you are a better slayer of god butchers than you are a dismantler of bombs. Gore, come down from your castle, you bloodless bastard. The gods of thunder have come, and we would have words with thee. Nay, the time for words has passed. Now we let the hammers talk. to be continued. All 
All right, that was my least favorite book so far of the series. Sharks from space. Sorry, yeah. sharks in space. It's like pigs in space, but it's sharks. <sighs> yeah, that was silly. Oh my god, the freaking three granddaughters of Thor that they're together, they're all the gods of thunder together. Like what? Uh, just whatever. <laughs> uh let's see. Um Ronnie says, "Ugh, back to fight ro back to the right side person speaking first. Bad form Marvel. Good art of the Yeah. Ones. Yeah, when they have the side bubble, the bubble all the way to the right with all the conversations and you got to figure out which one's coming from who. Yeah, there was a couple times where the uh, the lettering was challenging. I think I'm my guess is that because Asad Rabik is not like your traditional comic artist, and I feel like he was probably pretty young at doing comics at this point in his career. So I mean, doing comics is really I mean it's an art form, but it's also a craft. And knowing what Moranya just talked about was probably something that wasn't in his skill i don't want to say skill set you know what i'm saying he just probably wasn't even aware that that's like an issue and because marvel doesn't have editors editors can't teach you <laughs> they can't but, they can't point out what Moranya just said and said hey in the future this is how you want to draw your panel because yeah. the letter has to put the stuff here and here and like oh i mean you know <laughs> it's the little things now that isn't the first time they've had actually give thor a daughter though if you remember the next avengers Animated movie they did in two thousand eight. I don't pay. Yeah, it was a daughter of Sif and Thor. If you want to, if you want to violate canon, the first place you're going to go is the cartoons. Like that's going to get the worst. <laughs> um, I'm not going to hold any. Uh, the cartoons have actually, I think, been a, one of the biggest contributors to the downfall of comics. Yeah, because so many. It's fine for fans. Like, if you're yeah. just a fan, you can love whatever the hell you want. But a lot of the creators now that are on comics, they didn't grow up loving comics, but they grew up with the cartoons. So they treat the comics like their understanding of the cartoons, and so therefore the cart the comics get all watered and mutilated. Because, yeah, yeah. like, oh, when I was a kid growing up with a cartoon, this is how they did it. And it's like, oh, God, no one is... Yeah, so that was, that was, she was created by uh, Greg Johnson, Craig Kyle, Christopher Yost did the screenplay, but then... Avengers 1, which came out in 2010, by Brian Michael Bendis, she made her debut. She was drawn by John Romita Jr. But, of course, yeah, because yeah. that's what they do in the comics now, right? Like, even today, the new Spider-Man, right? It's got the kid from the Iron Man 3. That's like yeah, all the rage. Like, oh, look, is he... I'm like, are you kidding me? We're caring about that kid now? It's a first appearance. <laughs> you know. Well, because we don't know. That kid could turn out to be, like, the next big thing. It, like, they turn him it, into a superhero. It, it, they be taking him as as a science wizard, so and he's like Tony's right hand man. Right, he I could, was like, I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> he, he could he could become Iron Lad. Yeah, Marvel doesn't do Lad. That's a DC thing. But Iron Kid sounds stupid. Kid Iron Man that that doesn't work either. Kid Spider. Iron Boy. Iron Spider. Oh, there you go. Iron Spider. <laughs> No, he doesn't have spider powers. Like, why are you putting the spider stuff in there? Um, but he could be Iron Boy, Iron Man Junior, Jun Iron Kid. Who, who knows? Um, uh, Iron Man three thousand. Jimmy's not Jimmy's not pleased with me that I didn't like the freaking the feminist trio that <laughs> Jason Aaron threw into the book. To demean uh, Thor. Well, it, that's not the part I don't like about. It. I'm tired of like the three Thors on their merch together because I already called. I was going to going to have they have to have. Oh, I it's, think that's fine. It's because th that's the title uh, of the book, Thor. So you're going to give me three different variants of? I mean, because it's really one character. He's just in different points of time. It's interesting because you haven't done. If you you could easily overdo it but for one story, fine. I also think just, it it heightens the the threat level of gore that he can't be beaten just by one Thor. It took three different you know versions to work together. That makes the the villain like that much more deadly. You know what I'm saying? Like 
but yeah. I, I didn't these stupid oh we're the granddaughters of thor like oh really why are but, you here doesn't make any and, sense yeah ed burr brings a good point though who decides what's canon what's not apparently not the readers and um well, I, marvel marvel upper management yes. does they decide if it works then it's canon if it doesn't work they ignore it <laughs> um if only thor had his hammer he could drop the god butcher and then go for mead break uh, eat hammer in the morning and the evening nice uh let's see i probably say the best part of the whole entire book was when he opened up the door and he found like oh odin's been holding back on me all the mead that's, was that this issue? Is I think that was a previous issue. Jimmy's upset that I didn't love this issue. He says this book was dope. Ash, oh. you cringed a lot on things that weren't cringeworthy. You were fishing for things to cringe at. No, I wasn't, Jimmy. And I really don't like it when you insinuate things about me that aren't true. I have given this book every open-minded opportunity, and I haven't hardly said a negative thing up until now about this book. So, I mean, if I was just going to make up shit about the book to to bash on it, I would have done that from the get-go. And I wouldn't have continued on to read the second arc. I would have just finished on the first arc and been like, I'm done. So, I I don't... Look, I am not going to claim that I'm a perfect person. I'm not going to claim that I know everything. But one thing I don't like is having my integrity challenged. And when you tell me that I'm doing things that I'm not doing... That very much gets my goat, um, and I don't appreciate it. So I'm reading this book in tribute to you, and that's highly disrespectful of what you're doing. So I'll leave it at that and continue on. And you disrespect his goat. (laughs) Thor has goats. We never see him, though. Those are his granddaughters. Oh! (laughs) Oh! Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Ronnie says, I, I actually, I looked at this with an open mind, Jimmy, and even I cringed a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't No, I'm, I'm, look, I'm tired. I'm, I am sorry about, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry about having to be upset when I read a comic and every time you got to have the male hero be undermined by some female has to show up and be like uh 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 and he gets his ass handed to him by his own granddaughter and i'm just like as soon as that scene happened i was like why doesn't she just save the day why doesn't thor just go take a break just go fucking climb under a rock and let her be the hero and kick gore's ass why is Thor here to be fair though once you find out they're actually related to him it just makes sense why they're all arrogant it's like I guess. Because um, he's arrogant too. I'm going to do it myself. They're like stupid. stupid here, but the Thor. thing is, is if it really was as guardian gods, there wouldn't be feminism. Because, oh, be because pl- manliness, masculinity was a highly praised trait in Viking culture. Like, yep. th- there wouldn't have been any of this, like, oh, stupid man. Like, it's just so out of touch and it's so, like, modern day feminist bullshit and you're inserting it into Asgardian like into Norse lore I just I don't have time for that and especially since like the first six issues of this book I've been praising pretty good I gave every issue four stars with only minor critiques about some of the things I don't like what Jason Aaron's doing and in this book it's like oh god I'm starting to see like the shit that that'll get even amplified even more in future books and it's like that they were completely unnecessary, RDV. Those characters did not need to be in the book. They could have been anybody. What? They didn't need three of them. You didn't need any of them. They were just people, like fellow slaves. Well, you could have just had some random other, other qu- god. But right? I do have questions now. How many women has he slept with? Are they half sisters? Are they all from the same mother? You know, because remember, they're, he they're, had the threesome. And they- <laughs> they're granddaughters. We don't even have a clue. Like the lineage could be all who knows. Like, Thor slept with a bunch of women, like 50 different women. Now he has like 50. Uh-huh. <laughs> like... uh, all right, let's get, move on from this. I don't want to. Uh, 
Let's see. Jimmy... Ed said he cringed, but he still on. He still likes the story. Uh, Jimmy says I agree with you. I just seem like you were cringing at the three women before you even knew who they were. They work. Just give them the chance. Well, I didn't know who they were, but I can still cringe because the way the scene was drawn out, it was cringy. Like literally, the camera was at the floor angle, and you were looking up at these women, and they were standing over him, and it was very, it was a very demeaning way. Um, and like I said, Thor's the hero of this book, and uh, I don't know, it just and the way they talked about it, and then there was that stupid line where the one girl's like, "Oh my God, I've been having." inappropriate thoughts about my grandfather i was like uh roll my eyes we don't need that god you're you're comedy you're you're telling a fun that's not but it was like gross comedy talking about the granddaughter fantasizing about her grandfather like she didn't didn't know it was yeah i get that it's still cringy just like it's cringy (laughs) when i watch star wars and luke kisses leia because we know that they're sisters now, Lucas, Sisters? Lucas, brother and sister, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> George Lucas didn't know it at the time. So he wrote it, you know, that they were brother and sister after that scene. So he kind of finagled his way around it. But it doesn't take the cringe away from that scene. You're like, ooh, like it's not a comfortable scene to watch. It's not like a total gross out scene. Doesn't absolutely doesn't ruin the movie for me. But here's a case where Jason Aaron didn't even need to do this. Like, there's no point in writing that line. So why do it? Why why intentionally put cringe in your story? Especially when you're like, you got everyone all excited about the gores as badass. And oh my God, he's killing the gods. And like, all of a sudden, it's just stuff going good. And it's like a record scratch, right? And then, I'm going to attempt to make a stupid, inappropriate joke that's not even funny. I don't know. That's just me. Like, I... Other people, miles may vary. That's my honest opinion. Oh, uh, but don't worry. Uh, the tradition of introducing Thor's daughters it happened again in Captain Marvel twenty three back in two thousand eighteen. That was uh, dystopian future. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Ed she's says, got the hammer. Ed says he cringed, <laughs> but yes, he's still in on the story, and I am too. I didn't. I didn't just be like F this book. I mean, I gave it three stars, which is still a positive rating for me. It's not, you know, but it definitely was a down. This is definitely my least favorite of the issues. Um, See, she sucker punched him and three of them were on there for a while. And the new person comes in causing trouble that gets the other people killed. She has a right to be mad. I don't care that she's mad. I, I, but why doesn't Thor just wipe the floor with these three? Because he can't, because they got the power of woman, and they slap him upside the head, and they put him down, and he stays down like a little bitch. And I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'm sorry. This is probably not going to come across uh, flavorful to you. I was like, it's going to be kind of bitter sounding. But you come from a generation of where men are taught to basically bow to women. You're you're come from a a, a show your belly generation. And I don't, I, men aren't the superior species. I'm not like, we're not at all superior by, by any means, but we are raised at least, like I said, throughout throughout history, we're the dominant. That's, that's our biological role. And it's not just in humans, all mammals, the male is the dominant. And it's just it's just the way that it goes. And we are going against our own kind of biology and we're teaching men to just roll over, show your belly, never talk back to a woman, let them always tell you what to do. Always remember you're a stupid piece of shit and the women know better than you. That's what we're dealing with in our society today. And you are brought up never knowing or experiencing a world that was different than that. So to you, this is normal. This is like, oh, what, what? I don't understand what the problem is. I don't know. I, I found it. I found it funny though. What that she kowtowed him? That Thor, him? you know, Thor, you know, them making fun of him because they didn't know who he was. Like I said, and this, they thought he was just another, uh, you know, toxic. You know, not not toxic, but I mean like a big meathead. You know, you know, yeah. Guy. 
He was, and that's it, that's Bob Thorne's been betrayed that was, in the past dude, if, years. If if that was Jane Foster, they would have been like embraced her and been like, "Oh, sister, you're one of us," and no, 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 you're so good, and you will save us. And but but we realize that she, she neither one of them could pull it on the thunder, and only he could. You know why? Because he's Thor. I get you know, that. But that was later in the book. So, I'm talking about but, the scene. But I'm looking at the whole entire book, though. I'm not talking about this. This is scene. It's scene, yes, is cringe by itself. It's, certainly. But in the concept of the whole entire book, certainly it Thor, didn't, Thor gets didn't a, me. Thor gets his moment, and I agree with you. But my perception yeah. is, you didn't need to do that at all. Why do that at all? Why browbeat him and then have Thor go? Okay, we're gonna give him a moment again. I just don't think the scene worked well. I don't know. It just, it's, it just, just, it's just like any other movie you watch where they like, like this guy's full of shit. And then, he, then he's like, oh, crap, we were wrong. But you that's how you, I see it. You could have done that in a different way. Like true. But that was a little bit, you know, you could have just had them not believing in him. Yeah. You know, and he's like all braggart and stuff. And they're just like, whatever, you're stupid. It was just more of how like they put him on the floor and we're just like shut up, you know, it just made him look like a dunce and he doesn't fight back because that's the world we live in. When a woman puts you on the floor, you better cower because they're a woman. You can't touch a woman. They can beat the shit out of you, but you can't touch them because, you know, equality. Um, You're getting too political for my taste, bro. Sorry. Sorry, we'll go back. <laughs> You're um, not angled in life. Uh... Jimmy says, you say they aren't needed before you find out what they do. You are seeing number one issue of their story as well. I'm not saying that they're not needed in the greater parts of whatever things we haven't read yet. I'm saying that scene wasn't needed. That's what I'm saying. Do they have a bigger role later on? Maybe that they're important to be there? Fine. Maybe so. I don't see any importance in that scene, the way that that played out. Um, and he says, you made a huge assumption about me that is factually wrong, annoyingly wrong, rudely wrong. Come on, Ash. I don't know what assumption I made about you. I didn't make any assumptions about you. It's, it's, unless you're older than you've told us, you have not been consciously aware of a world before the 21st century. So, I think it was the comment about uh, maybe you saying maybe he's used to this, you know, because he hasn't he hasn't lived the world before all this stuff. He is. If you if you've never lived in a world, so I'm guessing. That. If I mean that's not an assumption; it's fact. If if you if your only knowledge of the world is post 2000, then you can't. I can factually say you don't know what it's like to live before the year 2000. So, and I, and I know the things I'm talking about because I'm speaking on my own experience as well. Being generation X and being part of the broken family and raised by a single mother, I suffer from many of the same things that I'm aware of. But you know, even if he, even if Jimmy being, when he's born, what's going on, if he's reading back issues, he can clearly see the difference. He can see the difference now. in writing. I'm talking about yeah. society. Well, society, as far as uh, culture, is also involved in the writing too, as well, because you wouldn't see you wouldn't see stuff like this. Yeah, he would just not see it. What I'm talking about is seeing the attack on culture. It's, it's, what I'm saying is, it's normal today. Like being a beta male is just normalized and accepted today. It's just how men should be. And to me, it's a completely. Uh, perverse and alien concept that I have to fight with all the time because it's just not. Um, and it's a sensitive subject. People get upset when you talk about it, like hence how the chat's gone here. And I, I, my, I don't mean to offend anyone or make anyone feel bad or anything. That's not at all my goal. Yeah. But uh, I, I did get a little incensed earlier because my integrity was attacked um, which I talked about. And also, like I said, this is just a difficult thing. Like we, most of us know like, shit, I'm going to piss someone off. So we talk about it. So we don't talk about it. You know, I don't talk about the concepts of masculinity and femininity, things like that, because someone's going to get fucking pissed. Like, and I, it's not my goal to piss anyone, especially when I'm doing an entertainment show like this. Uh, just mm -hmm. when we went off the rails here and now, <laughs> now here we are. 
Um, Dropping f bombs, bro. What the hell? But look, part of what I do is I talk about comics. Now I got two options or three options as I see it. I can just keep my mouth shut, which is not talking about comics. The option two is I could bullshit and just say nice things and not be, af- you know, be afraid to offend anyone and candy coat everything and try to be all politically correct and da 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 da. Or three, I can give my honest and true opinions because that's, I think, what people, they may not want to hear them based on how those opinions come out, but I would hope that people would care more about the truth than being having smoke blown up their skirt. Um, I hate dishonesty and disingenuousness. Like, I can't stand it. So it's it's very difficult for me to do it. And sometimes we, we in order to get along in the world, we have to do it. Because it's just not worth upsetting people. Think, like if you're at work, <laughs> oh, I better bite my tongue than get fired. You know, type of thing. Because well, um, of consequences. The cultures, yeah, society yeah. is basically frowned upon certain things and all. And now there's actually like the point where you can actually go to jail. Oh, yeah. It's just getting worse. For yeah, it's, it's just it's, getting so worse. It's and, it's, and it's only <laughs> going to get worse. I mean... Think of, I mean, think of, I don't want to get too heavy on this channel, but it, it, here we go again. Think about this. In the early 1930s, do you think Germans, if you would have pulled a German on the street, you would have been like, what do you think if uh, 10 years from now, you guys are going to be throwing Jews into ovens? Oh, you're fucking crazy. That isn't going to happen. Like, no way. Like every, I would say 100% of people you pull, I bet, would have been like, no way. Like, look, the Jews, kind of bad people. You know, they, they took all the wealth and all this stuff. They might have, like, bad things to say, but we're not going to block them away. In a con- no way that's going to happen. And that's the danger. Like, the, I just see our society. And the one thing that age gives you is the ability to see these patterns play out. And a lot of times when I bring this up about age is because when you're a, you've only been an adult for a handful of years it's harder to see that pattern have played out. But when you've been an adult for multiple generations and seen multiple generations of kids like grow up and you see how things change and how that pattern goes, you, you can more clearly identify what's going on. And um, unless society makes some major changes, we're going down that road that one day, I mean, one day possibly I'll still be alive to see it we're going to have some pretty severe consequences for people for some pretty mundane things. I, I understand Jimmy. You can say, like, I mean, no offense and like, or, and, and say something, but yet I just, everybody takes things differently. Like, you know, here's the thing, Jimmy, that's I believe thing. you when you say you meant no offense by it. Yeah. That's the reason so, that some people would not not believe that at all. If I if I thought you meant offense by it, we wouldn't even have a conversation. Right? Like and that's what I honestly do care most about is what your intents are, which is why we've stayed what I would say reasonably as friends because of that. Like I think your intentions are good. But even with good intentions, we can step on people's toes. And when you accidentally step on someone's toes, Hopefully you go, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I didn't see your toe there. I apologize. I'll try not to step on your toe again. <laughs> um, so uh, let bygones be bygones. I said my piece. What bothered me? You now have that information. Um, and we'll go. I don't, I don't want to be. I'm not upset. I'm not a person to hold grudges or be bitchy about people. I do just want to have fun with comics despite my saltiness sometimes. Um, See, now you trigger, you know, you trigger fans really much. You just, instead of doing Jane Foster, we just skip over that one. You just have the daughter of Thor, the next character, <laughs> the MCU. And we'll get Amber Heard since everybody just is so triggered by her. I don't even necessarily mind that that character could exist. I just don't like how it was in, like, I don't like it's how it's fitting into the story so far. If you wanted to tell a story 10,000 years ago, here's this girl who's daughter of Thor. I'd be like, whatever, tell me a story. But it's, that's, you know, it's like how you, you're not interested in the three Thors, right? Well, I don't, well, 
Which, which it, ones? The daughters? <laughs> no, no, no. The, 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 you, it's, no just, it's just it's, some, some things fit right with you and some things you go, ah, it just doesn't work for me. Well, I was just say, back when this book came out, I might have been a different take on it because I'm just the point where everything has been like time travel. Everything's time travel. And just with the whole Loki thing now, and then before that, you got the, you know, the end game and all that stuff. It just, like, it just feels like the past, what, 10, 10, 15 years, or actually not 10 years, but the past six years probably. Well, everything I, is just about time travel. And, I get and what you're saying. Having, it's a trope. I get it's, what it's you're been saying. Done I get what you're saying. However, keep this in the back of your mind. These are back issues. And, so and these, I know these are back issues. These all occurred before so, everything you said. I, I know. So if I would, I mean, so I'm just over that. And then even though these are back issues, and that's, I just, you know, it's a, I'm just tainted by that already. So if I would have read these before that, I probably wouldn't have been, you know, I probably would appreciate it more. But, mm-hmm. um, but I do. I mean, it is funny that the Thor, the younger, the, the youngest, oldest, you know, Thor, like the youngest one, be like, "Are you Odin?" Like, wait, ah, crap, you're me. <laughs> it's just the reaction to that because he's like, he's the meathead Thor. He's the, you know the primitive one. He does you know, he just wants to drink mead and just fight and stuff. You know, which I love that you know. And then you got the Thor who's with the Avengers, and then you got the the depressing Thor. Like, I lost my arm and my eye, and now he's like, I'm stuck with these children. It's just like. Why don't you just bring Hercules into it too? Now we'll have three versions of Hercules. You know what I mean? You yeah. Imagine if, if Marvel would have started doing that. We're gonna have now Hercules is gonna have his own arc like this. I, I would you be know? a little bit more sensitive to it if this was like a brand new story, but since this was like ten years ago or more, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's like whatever. It, you, you, I'm gonna give you all the the fair shake. It's fine, I, and I am enjoying it for the most part. It's not the perfect story. I don't, definitely don't love it at Jimmy's level. But I definitely like it a lot better than any other Jason Aaron book I've read. So there's but, a plus. Um, but but uh, there's no exact. He couldn't name it Thor's Day because it started on a Friday. Oh, but no, but <laughs> but today could be Thor's Day. Today's Friday. It's two. No, it's I didn't start on a Friday though. For for for, for me, I did midnight. <laughs> if you're at Central East Coast. Yeah, but this is Asgardian time. It is great. It takes 10 years to get to <laughs> uh, uh, Dominic says, keep on being honest. By telling things like they are while maintaining an open mind invites discourse. We should be allowed to discuss and share ideas while being able to agree and disagree. Well said, my friend. Thank you, Dominic. That was a good thing to say. I, I agree with you. And look, I understand I can be salty and sour sometimes. I don't have the best uh, diplomatic mindset. It's hard for me to candy coat things and say things. And most of the time I'm just blunt because quite honestly, that's the way I like to be treated. I like people to just be shoot straight with me. Don't beat around the bush. Don't try to candy coat, you know, just tell me how it is. Um, Sometimes it's not pleasant to hear. It's like ripping off the bandaid. It's like, you know, sometimes I just need to hear it. And I, again, I go by intentions. So if if you say something bad to me and I'm like pissed off, I'm like, ah, oh, that's a shitty thing to say to me. But your intentions are like, oh, but I'm doing it because I'm your friend and I care about you. And I, you know, I think this, you know, then I'm, I'm going to blow off very easy because that's what actually matters to me is the intent. So if you're saying it, cause like, you're just like, oh, I just fucking hate you, Ash. And so I just want to hurt your feelings. Well, <laughs> yeah, then the intent's pretty shitty and I'm going to be pissed. So, <laughs> um, Yeah. But yeah, I, I do. I like. I, I think the world would be a better place if we could all just have discourse. I mean, it wouldn't always be fun and rainbows, but I think we would all get along better um, if we could just shoot straight. Um, speaking of shooting straight, this is the Green Arrow book I was saying. Quiver. Don't buy this one because it's only partial of the Kevin Smith and you're paying the exact same price. Um, by the way, is there any Green Arrow fans in here that would say... Like, Ash, this is the Green Arrow story you need to buy. Uh, I think Breen went to bed. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess Breen would be the one to ask. <laughs> Ronnie might know. I don't know if she likes she likes Green Arrow, doesn't she? I wouldn't say that Daniel Neal would like, be like, the best Green Lantern Green Arrow because while well, that come partial, well, look I'm at partial this. to Green. This one is 334 pages. Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Space Traveling Heroes. 
It's normally thirty four ninety nine. <laughs> it's a dollar sixty nine. And this looks like I don't know how does did Mike Grell does he go all the way back to the Silver Age? I don't know. I don't know how far Maybe. he goes back. Well, it's mid seventies, it says. But yeah, Mike Grell did the R Denny O'Neill. I don't know. I'm not as hip on all these things. <laughs> I'm not as I'm not I'm not as big on the the seventies. Like comics really starts for me in the eighties. Bring... See that, um, especially the, the late eighties is where that's probably where DC and Marvel really took off for me too. Yeah, that's a great era. Like With but, the John Byrne. I, I just really notice whenever I read up. comics that are before nineteen eighty, it can be kind of hit or miss for me because it was just a different style. Like you know. Like, most mediums, they've evolved over time. Like, you know, if you watch a TV show from well, the 60s, it's way different than TV shows today. Just because styles have changed and how we how they tell stories and the, the audience that they're appealing to. So when I read the books in the 60s and the 70s, they just feel different, you know? And sometimes, yeah, like the Stanley Spider-Mans, like, it didn't matter. But they're more the exception to the rule than the mm -hmm. rule. So I'm I'm very careful. Like I'm like ah, if it's if it's before 1980, this better be something special. <laughs> yeah, I, I I understand that because but I my said like if you I say from like the late 80s because you get the Mike Barry and all more or less Flash you know more or less was a kid now he's now the Flash Barry's dead so you're getting a whole new thing. Um, you're getting the Frank Miller you know. It's coming in and doing, you know, Batman Year One. The late '80s, it's just, a, it's just a game changer for the comics for Marvel, DC. Everything is pretty much just brand new, starting over. And unlike what they're doing now, back then it was necessary and it really improved the comic books. Look, I mean, look at Daredevil. Daredevil got improved a lot you know, by Frank Miller. You know, um, the X Men, Claremont, we was writing from the from the late '80s going into the early '90s. Before he left, you know. Oh yeah, certain certain. We were talking about this earlier. Certain certain writers revolutionized characters like that. That the 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 character or title was never the same after. And Frank Miller was that way on Daredevil. Walt Simonson on Thor. Uh, Chris Claremont on X Men. Um, I'm I'm maybe gonna guess Mike Grell on Green Arrow. Because just from reputation, but I honestly don't know. Yeah, um, I would say um, those that well, yeah, that that uh, what, what was it? Um, the three books he did, that's called again, uh, the Longbow Hunters. That to me probably changed the uh, Green Arrow. Yeah, Longbow because, Hunters you know, was was look, pretty was pretty decent. Um, dark and it was adult. Like, yeah, you could definitely feel the Frank Miller influence of this. Um, that that all the '80s comics had. I mean, honestly, in the '80s, almost especially if you were doing street level heroes, everyone was trying to be Frank Miller. Like it just what? the whole like let, everything was dark and just gritty. The way what he brought to that that sort of realism, um, it just yeah, it just permeated all the comics. Um. And and made the and the, and and, the, and it worked. Those characters are popping. Mean, Punisher became one of the most popular characters. Um, yeah, it, it just really killed the Silver Age. I think maybe may why Breen makes fun of Miller all the time because the Silver Age was all like bright and fun and hey, <laughs> you know we're goofy superheroes and and with Miller it was all like dark realism and your villains were drug dealers and. <laughs> kidnapping children on the street it was all you know just you know like, like uh you know they made catwoman a, uh, a prostitute <laughs> it's like people did not like what frank miller did sometimes uh let's see dominic says i would start longbow hunters for green arrow besides the run with o'neill I already did Green Arrow Long. I did it on this story stream. I did Longbow Hunter, so I have read this, um, and it is unlimited. Um, I just don't know enough about the character. Uh, Jimmy said that the quiver is awesome, which is good. Um, I just wanted to point out 
buy if you're gonna buy buy this one he oh, where'd it go where is it this one right here green arrow by kevin smith because it includes that in here and more but it's the same price so it's kind of silly to just buy the other one um but sometimes comiXology does that when they do these sales <laughs> i've totally noticed that Uh, RDV says, can anyone hear me? I cannot hear you, RDV. Are you talking? Uh, we got to fix RDV. Can anyone hear me? I guess that's the question. Let's fix RDV. All right. Am I back? Uh, I think something's going on with Discord. Let me know if you guys in chat can hear me. Because I'm having a Discord issue. I don't think it's affecting me, but it's affecting Vankman. So... Uh... Dun, 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 dun. Jimmy, we can hear you, Ash, but RDV was robotic for a minute. All right. I think it's a Discord issue. Testing. Testing. That's your mic. There we go. RDV is back. All right. Because I was like, they, yeah, they said they could hear you, but I was a robotic person. Yeah, you're roboting. Something went weird with the Discord. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden, like, you stopped talking. But I could see on the screen that you were streaming, you were still talking because you were pointing the things. I was like, I wonder if he knows. <laughs> yeah, and so my sound goes straight through the Streamlab. So um, yeah. they still heard me, but your sound goes through the Discord. They so couldn't hear you. But we got it all fixed. Um, what that was else? weird. Let's see what other sales are going on. Oh, Marvel Infinity sale. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, Infinity Gauntlet for three thirty nine. That's an all time classic. Hmm. Yeah, Jimmy, I never left. I don't know. I was just. <laughs> I want to go through and read these. The Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, Infinity Crusade again. It's been yeah. so forever since I read these. And I was going to buy this, the Hickman Infinity thing. Yeah. But now it's on Unlimited, so I'm like, I can just read it. <laughs> this thing is pretty ginormous. 866 pages. Damn. It's a good buy for twelve bucks. Um, it's I, do, like that now. I do like Hickman when he's when he's good. Well, yeah, I was reading up in the, in the Discord group. I think it was you. I think it was yours. Probably where I read it. I think Skip said it, or or, or was it Ryuk said that Hickman's abandoning ship. <laughs> yeah, <in> X Men. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. That that's <laughs> sounds like speculation on Skip's part. I don't think he has any real info, but I don't know. It, it but it appears that way. Who's taking over? Like some poor guy, just like is left to do it. Uh, Gary Gary Duggan Gary, is doing. Gary Duggan. It. Yeah, they're they're giving <laughs> X Men to Gary Duggan, of all people. <laughs> um. Oh, look at massive Vampirella sale. Yeah, I saw that. Um, they're like half off. Wow, these are omnibuses. How big is a Vampirella omnibus? Let's see. Dude, they're like they're bigger than the freaking um the ones I've seen, the original ones. Hey, I don't are, know what these ones are. These are five hundred plus pages. Yeah, they're like I saw them just like volume six through seven. I've never seen anything before that on their shelves at any of And I was like, 
because I've seen the compendiums for like for um Walking Dead, and those are like nothing almost. Some of the books I've seen. Yeah, that's this is a good deal here. You get a bunch of if you're a Vampirella person. Look at that, four omnibuses. Cheap, cheap, yep. cheap, cheap. Oh, DC Pride Month. Yeah, I saw it's, that it's too. All, all Batwoman. <laughs> they just like parade her out here. Look, we have gay characters. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do they have anyone else? Bombshells. Constantine? Is Constantine gay? Constantine's apparently been bisexual. Oh, I it was. That. It was and, and in the early vertical stuff, it was hinted at it, but they never really confirmed it. Like, he was being tortured. He's like, oh, I've had worse. You know, it's like, you know. And, and to me, I took it at him just being an ass. But then CW's like, you know, or, or, or uh, CW was in New 52. Decided, like, they're like, we're going to have Constantine just, like, get with a black guy. So then the CW's like, we can work with that. So when they got their gritty hands on Matt Ryan's character, they made him, like, you know, just, like, completely full-on gay. Like, the first time to sleep was Sarah. Then they, and then, and then yeah, this base, they basically gave her the Sarah treatment. Sarah, um, what's her name? Sarah Lance treatment. Where oh. she slept all over, and then she went full-on lesbian. I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, like oh. <laughs> it's like... Lame. The I thing this... me off... Go ahead. I was say that the, well, the one thing that pisses me off when people write Constantine... They focus on his sexuality more than they care about the actual story. He's not he's not a freaking like 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 they focus on that. I want the whole magic, the guy who's a con artist, the one who just hates capes, you know, from vertical, the one he's chain smoking. I that's what I want. I don't want a guy who's just like, We're gonna give you a whole entire book about him having a lover's quarrel with some guy because he wants to be a good costume feels bad. No. <laughs> That's not what Constantine is. That was that failed hell bl- hell Oh, blizzard. look what's on. I can't. I can wait an eight second delay. <laughs> oh, because I cut the window off. Yeah, because I had to try to fix. Yeah, um, it's understandable. Well, but where is? I'm seeing Hellblazer now. There we go. There you go. It's live. Um, this is I've been wanting to read. It's the Sean Gordon Murphy. Illustrated Hellblazer book. Oh, City Demons. Yeah. Um, it's early Sean Murphy, so it's. Oh, it is great though. But uh, I just love. I'm I'm just a huge fan of Sean Murphy's, and uh, I've been wanting to get. It. I was like, oh, I'm not a huge like I'm not really a Hellblazer guy. I'm not anti Hellblazer. I just never got into it, and I was like, should I get this book? But now I can get it on limited, and it's only three thirty nine. It... Wow, this is really nice. Help. Well, you got to learn how to use it. <laughs> Turn it off and destroy it. <laughs> <Get a new one. laughs> I didn't realize, like, I guess, I don't know. That's... DC's really struggling, man, with the, the pride stuff here. Um, a lot of Batwoman. It's like, but look, look, we got a gay Batwoman. Um... I really want to read this series. Is, have you ever read this, Venkman? It's um, waiting for yeah to load the uh, Gotham Central. So Ed Brubaker, Greg Rucka. It's a series about Gotham PD. Did you lock up again? You locked up again. Damn it, Venkman's breaking my chat. You guys can hear me, though. I wonder why Discord's having problems. Hmm. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I think you can. Yeah, you can. Let's see. John just likes to get off no matter who with, says Jimmy. Um, hmm. Let 
Well, Vankman, I'm I'm struggling to I tried I moved us to a different server on there to try to connect us. And uh it's just not connecting for me. Ed says we can only hear Ash. That's the way that it should be. No, I kid. How about now? There we go. You're back. I had to just I I hung up the call and just came back on. There and we I gave go. Corda the finger. All right. Well, I take all I take back all the things bad I was saying about you. Though they're all true, definitely, you know. But thank you for not going in depth into the really bad ones. Uh, yeah, I promise I did not do that. I heard I had the phone next to me. <laughs> <laughs> you hear everything. So, anyways, what I was saying that you were not able to respond to. Have you read these uh, Gotham Central books? No, I haven't. Um, they look. They don't look new. They look older. Yeah, they're older. Um. But wow. it's a series that's all about the Gotham PD and how they interact. Um, and my what, buddy was telling me he... this is really good. And it's it's Brew Baker and Rucka teamed up. Um, so I'm gonna give this a shot now that the first one is on Unlimited. But I mean, I I love me some Brew Baker and that's being four and fifty two. Wait, what did you say? What year is that from? Is that early 2000s? 2011. Okay. So this before New 52 was what, 2012? Um, just, be just before? I think this might have been right around that time. Or, or, or this was a standalone. But this was a book that's just based on the PD. It's not really about... I, I think Batman makes some appearances here and there, but... It's just about James Gordon. It's about the whole PD. Well, it looks so, like James Gordon so, on the front, so maybe yeah, he's part, Gordon is part of the PD. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, is that, but you can is see that like, yeah, Renee Montoya. And uh, I was talking to my buddy; he was recommending to me. He's like, "Man, you would love this book." Um, and he was telling me some things about it. And it's one of the things I was asking him. I was like, "Is it like, is it like man on the street type of thing where it's like not?" Like, where they see Batman, but you never see it from, like, Batman's perspective. And he's like, yeah, it's totally like that. I was like, oh, that's so awesome. Um, so, like, when when Batman makes an appearance, it's kind of like Mar. Like, did you ever read the series Marvels? No, I haven't. But I have been, oh. like, bombarded by people who just, like, have orgasms talking about it. I might have to do Marvels next <laughs> after we do God of Thunder. Uh, I was reading uh, Gotham Underground or Streets of Gotham. Um, Those are fun books. Uh, Marvels. So, so, Darren, I was hoping you would give us be a quick analogy. So, Mar one of the cool things about Marvels is the story is all told from this one person, um, F uh, Phil, Phil something. I forget his name, but he's he's a reporter for the Daily Bugle, or and he's like a photographer, and it's told throughout like the history of Marvel or like the, the classic Silver Age history of Marvel. and But it's told from like his perspective, not from the perspective of the heroes. So when they see like, like the Fantastic Four for the first time, it's like how we would see the Fantastic Four. We'd be like on the news and be like, oh my God, look what they're doing. Like it has this sort of like sense of awe and wonder and it never goes from the perspective of the heroes themselves. And it, it the way that it changes the feel of the story is something that I had never seen before. I'm I'm sure it's been copied since, but I thought that was a really cool thing. Uh looks like Jimmy's leaving. Before he goes, he wanted me to read what I said about Infinity. Um He yeah. said and I did read it, Jimmy. I just didn't think it was important to read out loud, but definitely I'm gonna take that advice. I'm not gonna just jump on Infinity out. I'm I I'm I think I'm supposed to start at secret Secret Warriors is the right one to start. I'll do some research. I do want to kind of read the stuff in order, especially with Hickman, because this shit gets really complicated. Secret Wars, I think it is. No, Secret Wars is where he ended, I think. Oh. But Secret Warriors 
is uh is the book that he did Bendis started it actually I think Bendis did the first volume um and then he took over and then I think he went on to Avengers after Secret Warriors I have to look it up I had a reading list at one point um uh, something killing the children is now available on Comicsology Unlimited I'm gonna check that out um James Tynan spotlight sale what is James Tynan up to? Everyone's everyone's in all the rage of James Tynan. By the way, he did a horror book before Something Killing Children called The Woods that no one seems to know about, but man, all in Unlimited. Right. Would you guys like to see me read like the first story arc of some, Something Killing the Children on one of these? I as well. People keep talking about it. I mean, that's my, but yeah, it's one of the know. reasons I like doing this is because it exposes, you know, if I just read the first arc and then if you like it, you can go pick up the rest yourself. Or if you don't, then you didn't really, you, you're the Edwin Blade of comics. If you read us at all, <laughs> <laughs> Dominic says Phil Sheldon. Yes, that's his name. Phil Sheldon. <laughs> I've been very curious about this book because it's all the rage. Um, <laughs> all the rage, all of you, you boomer. It's all the rage of the, of the kids. God, I'm getting close. I'm getting close to 50. <laughs> oh, look at this. Image original graphic novel. Get yourself some pulp. Heroes have been junkies. Mm. Pulp, the best book of last year. I need to think of an award that I could give like the Eisner. We'll call it like the Ashner. <laughs> the Ash, the Ashner award. The um, Ash can award. No, the Ash can award. Nice. Um, uh, HR, HR is down with that. Okay. Thank you for the uh, vote HR. I appreciate feedback on that. Uh, Marani says, I did a sequel to Marvel's, which followed Phil Sheldon further in the Marvel timeline. Yeah, I think I saw that. It's like the eye of the camera or something like that. Um, I want to check that out at some point. You got the eye of the camera? I forget what it's called. It had a weird name like that. And uh, Kurt Busiak is actually doing a new Marvel's book right now called The Marvel's. Oh. Um, and yeah, I'm... <laughs> I, yeah, I just saw it and I was like, "Oh shit!" Um, but um, Marvels fell so far from grace that I it, it didn't even phase me. <laughs> I was like, "Whatever." <laughs> um, HR says, "Check out Ram V's The Savage Shores." Yeah, I would like to at some point. Um, Ram V's been an artist, like or not, not an artist, but a writer. But I've actually been like impressed with. Have you liked his like, stuff? He's, you know, he's been. I've he's been writing Catwoman. Oh, since. Yeah, since uh, issue one, he's been you know actually, and Joel, I uh, actually no, I think it back. I think he took over for Joel Jones. I, 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 uh, it's it's yeah. It's like, Noel, uh, Joel Jones was doing it, and then yeah. Blake Northcott did a couple issues. Yeah, but I've actually been really and like enjoying it. It's actually been like pretty fun. Um, oh, I've heard I know ever it, ever since Savage Shores came out, I've been hearing people just rave about that and rom v and he's doing the he's doing the swamp thing book right now people liking so it sounds like he's a talented writer um he just hasn't done anything that is something i would normally gravitate to well that, that's that's the thing there's a lot of writers i've never heard of like i, mean, I might have heard of the stories but i just don't associate the, like the, the writer like frank miller like is a big person but brian michael bendis whether you like him or not you know him you know he's infamous <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Greg Rucka, you know him. Uh, 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 he said, like Claremont, you know, Jason Aaron is popular. I mean, because well, he just like Bendis, he writes a lot of stuff. Whether you, whether you like it or not, the guy's been around for a while. You know, it's crazy. So it's like, so when I hear like new writers, like, you know, I, I look them up to see what they're doing. It's like, and 
I just happened to find Ram V because I ever started reading the Catwoman stuff. What I do is um, I pay attention to writers when they do something significant or when they do something that just everyone is raving about. And like Savage Swords came out and for a book from a no name publisher like Vault at the time they were like no, was, who's Vault? Everyone's like, "Oh, this book is so good." Da, da, da. And it just his name stuck out cuz it's a pretty unique name. So it's easier to remember. I I'm learning I'm learning more uh, writers names as I go into the independent stuff. But there's other because, ones that are just easy to dismiss, like Tim Seeley. I'm like, you've never done a Max single... Flash. That's the only thing I know from him. Yeah, like, you you haven't never done enjoy. anything of note, so I, yeah. I don't pay attention to that because... I mean, I only know his name because he's just been around so much, but there's a lot of writers that it just... Whatever, their name doesn't stick on the wall, I guess, in my brain until something of note or people are just like, Oh, this guy, this guy. Then I'm like, okay. Um, and then sometimes like in the case of Greg Rucka, you get taken off the wall when I Rucka was installed in my head. You guys angle team Rucka lesbians, Rucka lesbians. Okay. We get it. Well, Rucka for a while was like one of the big guys, like big Batman yeah. writer. Like he was, yeah. And then yeah. 20, in 2016, dude flipped out. Like, Oh, yeah, Trump and, DDS. And I read that Lois comic, and I was like, ooh. I, I read it, too, just because I want to see how how contrast it is cause to reading Lazarus. Lazarus, he kept all that crap out of the book. That was before 2016. No, but Lazarus, yeah, but Lazarus, even after the books I'm reading now, hmm. you're, not, you're not getting what you got with, uh, you know, Lois Lane. Oh, book, that's good. Which is so weird. It's like... Did they tell him, hey, you gotta, you, you know, you can't, like, or, or, I don't know. It's like maybe, because the image is it's his own book, what he's writing. But I mean, like, DC, maybe DC's like, you know what? You know, maybe, remember the, maybe the whole TDS was like DC's planned thing. It's like, we want you to go woke. You know, like, yeah, I know the super woke. Man. Well, I think part of it probably too is just a character yeah. of Lois Lane. I mean, she's a reporter. Yeah. So the DC probably came to him like, "Hey, you want to got any ideas for a Lois Lane book?" And he's like, "Huh, yeah, I got some ideas for a Lois Lane book." You know, like immediately he starts oh. thinking about what he could do. But with with uh, you know, his own creator own stuff, those ideas are already there. I mean, they've been around for years percolating in his head. So he but probably is less he, likely to go off the rails. But the thing is that you would like think that you'd take like a book like Lazarus, which is somewhat political, to have, you know, make it a Trump DBS thing, you know? But then he maybe he realizes like, you know, that shit doesn't sell when he wants his own stuff. For DC, he maybe like, you know, doesn't get pennies on a dollar. But this that's something another like, good point. That's a good point. You're, yeah. <laughs> you, I didn't think about that, but <laughs> it makes sense, like well, who cares if he fucks up Lois Lane? Like he's yeah. getting a paycheck, but his own property, he cares about whether that lives or dies. Because he gets a full royalties from that. Where DC and Marvel probably whatever the rights are. Remember, said these guys aren't getting their full credit. Maybe they're not getting paid as well. But yes, it's not his him, character, so yeah. it doesn't matter if it fails. Like it's whatever. Yeah, yeah. DC paid me to do it, and if it, you know, well, it's like work, look working at, at a fast food restaurant, you don't care about what you're doing. Maybe, you're getting paid. I, I so I always wonder, like Marvel and DC, like they have a thing what they want to do, and he just writes it. It's a paycheck to him, you know. But he goes write his own stuff. He doesn't put it in there, which is really weird. Though I said, like, so maybe he's just phoning it in, you know, for DC. Oh, yeah. oh hey, look at this. May, um, this. The sequel to the Thor book we're reading right now is on sale for a buck sixty nine. Yeah, like, obviously, like though he does have TDS. You see in the back of, of Lazarus, he does, you know, talk about it. You know, if you get like six, seven pages. But it has nothing. To, but it's not part of the story, so he gets a vent. But I mean, like, yeah. Uh, look at this cover. I was like, here's the sequel book. I'm just trying to think about who. Yeah, there's the there's the girls. Uh, that's uh, that's Frigga, the blonde. Isn't that oh. his mother's name? That's a uh, yeah yeah. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. His mother's name is Phoenix. Forgot. Well, that's the redhead over there. That's the granddaughter. No, no, I was making. Yeah, it's Phoenix. That's right. 
No, but it real isn't his real mother yeah. bef before Jason Aaron fucked it up? Wasn't it Frigga? Uh, I think his mother yeah, was Frigga or Freya. I think it's Frigga. In the MCU, it's Frigga, right? I don't know. I get yeah. Marvel messes me all up. I gotta go read the. Well, Freya real... was was always like the mother of like Earth. You no, know? that was that was Freya. I don't know. It was Frigga. No, but Odin's wife was Frigga. I thought. Again, sometimes I mix things up because Marvel does things different than the than the actual mythos. So it's, it's Frigga, Rock, Odin's granddaughter, great great granddaughter. <laughs> oh. like I said, like three is is overkill. One I wouldn't mind, you know. There's another Assad Ribic. But the other thing doesn't make sense, so it's like oh if that's God. like Thor's if that's Thor's like granddaughters, how does that work out with future Thor who has no other siblings or kids out there other than dead? So they from the alternate timeline? I don't know. Then nothing That's what I mean. That's that's a... This is this is the guy who made Phoenix Thor's mom. <laughs> Look at this though. There's another uh, Sod Rabik Thor book. And it's not by Jason Aaron. I didn't know. Thor and Loki Blood Brothers from 2004. Um, uh, Odin, Odin's Odin's yeah. least favorite son rewrites Asgardian lore from his perspective. Who's it? Rob something. Rob Rob Roddy. Wow. Little mini series. Yeah, it's just four issue mini series, but the oh, art inside. Oh my, that, mom, look, oh my gosh, look at that cover. That is better than anything I've seen so far. Look at the interiors. Now that's my Loki. Isn't that badass? That's the way Loki should look. This evil. I hate little look child that. Loki with the short little horns. Yeah. It's kid Loki, evil Loki, yeah. Yeah, you can say like, this is him growing up. I just love these these big ass horns. And the kid spits on his face. Yeah, I remember seeing that uh, cover. Man, solder beak. Just... Look at this. Look at this art. You don't get this in Marvel Comics anymore. It's on Unlimited. I'm going to have to check that one out. Gaia is, Gaia is Thor's mother. Mm -hmm. Is Gaia even as Norse god? I think Zach says, y'all still going? Oh, you want us to quit? Wait, are you saying you left? Yeah, he had to go do the... Um... Star Wars Brigade thing with Puppetine. Oh, he's he's got other things. He doesn't he doesn't come on my stream anymore. He goes to other people's streams. Wait, I I tried to befriend Zach and he just spurned me. You tried to groom him. That's why he left. Huh? <laughs> tried to groom him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zach, you must go and do this. <laughs> Ash tried to groom me. <laughs> Cancel Ash. <laughs> oh. Man, I gotta check out some more old Thor. Uh, Thor's one of my favorite Marvel characters, and I just never got back into him when you know because of the shitty Marvel. But uh, Kurt Busiek wrote Thor. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, now he's back for more. Hello, Zach. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I don't show up for your streams anymore. Huh? Hey, hey, you're not welcome. What are you doing in here? <laughs> this is an invite only, traitor. Uh, uh, no, I know for a fact that the Thursday and Tuesday night streams are open invites. I'm late, but I'm not. The door has not been closed. Oh. <laughs> well, welcome. Oh, welcome, Zach. Zach of many last names. What do you have to say to the good find audience of, of Ash I, Comics? I, uh, 
I hope y'all have been enjoying Thor. Uh, I've actually been liking listening to us. I was actually listening to you read the first issue uh, before I had to go get set up for uh, my other my other project. But um, no, I was liking it though so far. I'm not usually a big solo title guy, um, but uh, but I like what I've been hearing and, and seeing. Yeah, yeah Saad Rabik, I heard you talking about his artwork. His artwork is pretty. It's got a What's the guy's name? Uh, it'll come to me. It's got a certain appeal to it that I really like. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember the artist's name. What's his name? Is it Frank Zaretta? Oh, or... Frank Frazetta. 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 That's it. I can kind of yeah. see that. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. Okay. In Marvel Comics, his name, her, his mother was, was listed as Gaia. She's the elder goddess of the earth. But then the, the, Frigga is actually oh, in the MCU. Oh, okay. Played by Everyday Verduso. And they said oh. that he's only half as Guardian. Well, oh. we all know that's all wrong because the Phoenix Force is Thor's mom now. And then, and then, and Old Norse, Old Norse uh, mythology, Yord was was uh uh Norse. It was, she was a giantess, basically the mother of the, of the deity Thor. And the mistress of the god Odin. Oh, I gotta get this. Gotta get this. And, and, and then uh, Truid is the mother of uh, Thor in the Ragnarok TV series. Mm, Thor's got like five moms. I do not own this. Is that the Asgard, the X Men Asgardian Wars? Yeah. Ooh. Chris Claremont with Art Adams and Paul Smith art. Ooh. And it's only a buck sixty nine. Sixty nine. It's not that Thor has multiple moms. It's just that there's multiple Thors. Title. Multiple. Yeah, that's right. You know, we got the Spider Verse. I think it's time to get the Thor. Thor Verse. Yes, like what? The Thor Core is. You know, you've got a perfect intro with the Thor Core they had from Secret Wars. Actually, I think they had Thor Core before Secret Wars. They had a Thor Core. Just look at this. Hold on a second. Look at this. This is what comics look like in the eighties. Right? This is all bad. badass. Look at badass Loki. You got the X Men. You got Alpha Flight. Look at. You mean it's like, oh, oh. lightning and all this badass awesome. Okay. Then we fast forward to the 21st like. century and go, here's what comics look like in the, in the new era. Oh, that art is bad. Hey, look, that looks like an Avengers Assemble look, art. Look. I'm Met- Metrosexual Hulk. Look, it's a bunch of freaking high school kids cosplaying. Look! Look at this dude in the background. Look at how he's holding his like. Who is he? Pro- That's Prodigy, who was a really badass character in Chris Yost's, uh New X Men, but then this is his first step on that cliff that ultimately drives him to where. Do you know what it reminds you? It's a, it's like the male version of the girl that's like supposed to the new Our Man in the Star Trek series. Wait, what? Have you, have you watched the new Star, uh, Star yeah, Girl I've series? Yeah, I've seen Star Girl. The one who, not Our Man, but the the one who, um, Doctor Midnight. Uh, the female ver- the female that puts on the glasses. That maybe. looks like the, the, the male, like effeminate version. Yeah, well, he's the guy that um, you know, that panel of America Chavez where she goes, "Holy menstruation." That's who she's talking to when she uh, says that. No. So yeah, like uh, I'm saying, after after New X Men, they they totally did Prodigy dirty. He was one of the coolest characters, and because he, he had the ability, he he could uh, once he read something or once he saw something done, like he did like a body, he could uh, mimic people's body language and abilities. So like martial arts, self defense. I think he like could remember anything that Beast had taught him, so he was really smart as well. So this really cool character. I think he got depowered through uh during M Day too, so but he still retained all that knowledge. So he's this really cool character and then yeah, this ruined him. So Yeah. This, this... I want the alternate reality where she jumps and then she splats. <laughs> <laughs> My powers are gone. <laughs> Uh, it's not the characters. It's just look at the the cover here. It's just it's so effeminate and so like just like, yeah. we're like heroes and stuff. We're like don't mess with us. Like why is if he's a scroll? Why does he have blonde hair? 
Uh, I think he's only half scroll. I think he's half scroll, half Cree. Because uh, he's gay and he's like called Hulkling. Um, but he's and, not even a Hulk. But he's not even a banner. But so he's, he's but not he's, even a banner. He's, but he's, he's not green, a Hulk. so he's just like a Hulk. Duh. They should have saw him. They should have called him Sulkling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I just, one. I just, just the 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 energies like what I'm talking about when I look at this cover, it just looks so like. Uh, I, this is like how comics are. I think like I had a brother once who read a comic and. Is it James kinda, Masters on the right? It's kind of like this, I think. Um, wait, what do you mean? The one with the white hair? Yeah, it's James Masters or whatever it is. <laughs> no, that's um, that's Speed. That's um, uh, I, I know, I, I I know, but the way they draw him, it looks like he's. Uh, Meanwhile, from, uh, from Buffy. Buffy. Brothers <laughs> comic actually look like this. Like, just I don't know, just that Loki face still creeps me out though. That's just he so... looks like he looks like Mister um, not Mister Doctor Light from uh, Teen Titans. He's more like Ming from uh, from uh, what's it called, uh, Flash Gordon. Oh man! Oh yeah, I can see that. Is the Lafron with freaking chin, and then there's the other one, Vote Loki, which is basically based off Tom Hiddleston's face. And you know, and I know that the series is gonna do something in reference to that, where he like, they had it in the trailer where he's like wearing a suit with a voting pen on it and stuff. Yeah. So whatever it's, issue, it's, whatever it's, issue you have of that, that's gonna go up in price on eBay. Watch. Well, Ash, has, Ash, did you watch it? Yet? What? Loki. The Loki show. I probably won't the get to that show. for a couple weeks. Okay. Because it's like summer break and the kids are gone for a while, so I'm I'm sure I won't get to it for a while. I was going to make a joke about you know, but I can't because it'd be resolved in a spoiler. I'll give it six weeks. The whole series will be out by then. You can binge it. I think it's only six episodes. Like, if, if you don't watch it, the first hour comes out. But that after that hour ends, you it's, you can't avoid the spoilers. Oh my God! Chris Samney did a Thor comic. Wait, what? Did he really? Yeah, it's on the screen right now. Hey, I like Chris Samney. Hey, look at that! I like Chris Samney part... on Firepower, but it's not a person I would put on Thor. That's that's uh, the mighty young Thor. Who's the um, who's the writer on that? It is Roger Langridge. I have no idea who that is. Man, bat. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, night HR. This night HR. Show. Good night HR. Remember, Ronnie called him FFHR. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, it looks like it was an eight issue mini series in 2010 through 2011. Ronnie says, I truly wish they would dial down the colors and the reprints that they do on white paper or reprint them on very pale tan paper. The old newsprint blunted the colors. They were not that bright. I agree, Ronnie. <laughs> um, I, I like it bright because it stands out then. It looks shiny new. Hmm. Yeah. If, that, I want old, if I want old stuff, I'll just go buy the old stuff. And it's probably worse for women because for, um, apparently there's a big biological difference in how men and women see colors. Yeah. And, and the reason why comics historically have been colored the way that they have been is because it appealed to a male eye set. Like guys are more like eight, pro like eight color type of thing. Like just straight yellow, green, blue. Like we're not into the whole variant shades of pastels and things like that. Like we just... as long as you don't give me rainbow crap, I'm fine. But what women, their their eyes are built to actually see more variance in color than men, um, and which is some people believe is an explanation of why modern comics look like this. Feminized. Instead of. Well, yeah, it's pink. I don't want a guys to like wear like pink. It's, it's, that's also, also that's also rainbow. Look at it. there's purple, green. Mm -hmm. But oh, it's all like a pastels and stuff too. These are colors. That are outside of the Crayola crayon box colors, you know, like that, yellow, brown, that, green. Like guys are more. Like... But no, but it, it looks like you get like your '80s color, '80s like you know, I don't know like a uh, Dazzler, you know, a Rainbow Bright. 
Well, even right. even back then, like the Rainbow Bright, the books would have been colored. You know, like if you look at this old book here, you can just see the colors are more what I call like the Crayola crayons, right? Because it looks, basic. That looks prehistoric with the way they do the, the orange and the yellow and stuff. You know. Yeah. Look. Yeah, it's got a nice little. But like, ancient but like the it. the yellow yeah. is yellow, the blue is blue, the the red is red. It's not like magenta or cyan or all these I don't know. in between don't, variants. Don't, don't, it looks like goldenrod on the. It looks like goldenrod yellow on those boots. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas today, the colors are picked more out of the. Well, look, look there. The gods, Thor, the gods and devils. That'd be, be like your man thing. That's what I assumed everything was back in the day. Like dark colors. Gods and devils? Where did I? It's right there. Go down. To your left. Move your mouse to the left. Ooh, I can get the whole collection Passing of it. that Mighty Avengers run for. Oh, this. It's up there. Oh, this is because you're young. This is like 2000s. And oh, that's what I consider manly stuff. Like you want, we want action. We want darkness. We don't want all the freaking like bright colors. Well, I associate I think, pink and I yellow. Think bright colors. I, I think you're pink you're, and yellow. You're talking pink about yellow and purple. Yeah. No, you're you're talking about tone, which which is valid, and I agree. Like it has a more masculine feel what? with a dark thing but, but i'm talking I, about I, actual colorization and the, the choice of the color palette men don't see color in the same way the variant like that women do so the basic use of colors like i said like the eight basic crayola crayon colors were all guys ever needed um i'm when sorry you, i associate pink and yellow with women so gold you know, you're going, you're that's going, because he spent too much time watching power rangers you're going with tone again i'm not talking <laughs> about like what tone and social constructs i'm talking about biological how you how your eyes actually interpret color and see things and women see more variation and so when they only see like the primary colors like this it's very harsh and then Marania is what i was saying was like because it's on the white digital background it looks even harsher probably to her eyes because of that, anyways, I got we got lost in the, or I did at least. <laughs> Ash's new, the uh, about the evil name is the kaleidoscope. Yeah, like this is a good example of a cover that just is not. Oh, gee, that's that looks bland. With a I just see the purple. title. It looks bland to you and I, as to guys because it's just lots of shades of different purples and blues. Well, it's looks, meant to. It's isn't it again. meant to be in the background? It's meant to have Loki pop, though, isn't it? Like it's in the background. Yeah. So the background is supposed to be a faded out more color in order to make whoever's in the foreground pop out more to the to the reader. Just, well, yeah. Look at the. the no, yeah. but I'm talking about the the use of color. So, you're like for this would be more, you know, the bright, just actual primary colors. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's you can see it probably better if I look next to that looks, that looks so like Fortnite. this journey into mystery and then look at this acts of vengeance mm -hmm. like this is straight basic colors and it's a lot more contrast yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Where, yeah they could have had loki be a little bit they could have made his colors more brighter and, have <laughs> and then pop the, out a little bit more and then that during the mystery in the middle there looks look like a guy's thing and then you got the little kids one to the right so the the theory is that this doesn't bother women though in the same way because their eyes are better at discerning color variants and things like that so men have harder time and it looks mushy and bland and it's not as appealing so kids boys tend to go for the more just poppy you know color uh, saturation and contrast that looks, that looks like 90s cringe what does the one he's on right now? It is the nineties. Uh, I would Avengers. say I would say eighties. That uh, that looks like the freaking nineties cartoon Fantasy Four. Oh, you're right. It's oh. late eighties. I was thinking it looked like the old GI Joe cartoon animation. But I mean, but I mean, like the 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 color. Oh shows. yeah, the costumes. Yeah, it does kind of look like the cartoon though. So I like said, which those were based off the I guess the eighties. This is yeah. These, this is eighty eight. This is Simonson, isn't it? Maybe. Oh, uh, Walt Simon writing, Rich Buckler drawing. That 
darn buckler. Uh, and as a four, man, what a what a bunch of egotistical pricks. You how, got a giant much, four in the building? How much longer until we get another Axe of Vengeance? Um, I'm gonna give it five years. I'm gonna because there only, you go. only because I'm sure we'll get another evolutionary war. We just had an Atlantis attacks. They just redid Atlantis attacks not too long ago. So I'm not willing to bet well, they're yeah. going to do an evolutionary war again. And then we had Annihilation, remember? Mm, I forgot about that. They did do Annihilation. Recently. I mean, we got Heroes Reborn and Heroes Return and uh, Inferno all this year. Those are three remakes. So Acts of Vengeance, uh, five years, man. I would say like two years. Acts of Vengeance, you probably get another Asgardian Wars in there, too. We're already getting another Infinity Story. Oh, God, don't remind me. Freaking Infinity Stones. Speaking but of, the, uh, speaking of said Asgardian that. Wars, remember this failed book? Which one? Asgard. I was actually interested in that one recently. I never read it. Look at this dope here in the in the middle. Yeah, there's there's no. He's just holding that. Thing. Yeah, it's like, not he... Thor. It's it's other Asgardians, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. there's Frog Thor. There's Frog Thor. No, but I'm just look at this guy. He just looks like a dope. Like he's never held a weapon before. He just looks so like, uh, look at me. I'm holding. A that hand. is, um, I think that's Kevin Masterson or Keith Masterson. It's, uh, who is the guy who becomes like Thunderstrike? Or he doesn't have a he doesn't have the name Chris. for Chris. Chris, that guy. I think that's supposed to be who that is. What was Eric what kind of Masterson? Hammers? I thought was Eric. Oh, is it Eric Masterson? Yeah, Eric, yeah. Oh, wow. My bad. I got the. And then look at this. The, I remember this as Guardians of the Galaxy. I'd read the first oh, issue. Oh God! It's like look that how it girl. opens. That's that's the girl from the the failed Defenders relaunch where they tried to do the Defenders. I think they only had Misty Knight and Valkyrie for like five issues, but there was like an archaeologist who I think had a crush on Valkyrie. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's that's her Annabelle. I, I read this this first page and I was just like, oh my god, this is a, not a comic for men. Greenwich it's not Village. a sci. It's not a sci-fi comic at, at least. I mean, she, wait, that's the wait, cover. No, but just look, let me come on. But... Greenwich Village, New York, Midgard. Then, can you believe how gorgeous <laughs> it is? We haven't had a day like this in forever. I mean, it's just perfect, isn't it? The company helps. You're buzzed. Maybe, definitely, but a fact's a fact. Days like this, they've been too few and far between for us anyway. Annabelle Riggs, archaeologist. <laughs> we should do something to change that. Ren Kimura, inhuman. Well, funny you should say that, because there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Whoosh. And then Greg Ruggish is a lesbians. Annabelle Riggs, you <laughs> must come with us at once. The okay, but that is a cool grave shot. Peril. That is a cool shot, but like this first page is just like gag me oh, with no. a spoon. Yeah, that first page has no, no real place in a. Or, no, it's something that's oh. selling. It's if it's selling itself as this crazy outlandish fantasy in the space series. That that whole first uh, shot that uh, does not belong there. Well, I just uh, think it is, doesn't have a place no. for like boys. Like if you're a boy. You mm -hmm. not want want to watch women around sit, sipping wine with straws? Who the frick drinks wine with a straw anyway? <laughs> I just People want to that out. litter the ocean. The whole so. point of that is establish that this girl's a lesbian, and guys, you cannot yep. find after her. That was the whole. That's. I think that's exactly it. That, that is. Was. That is the point. But it's also yeah. written in a style that appeals to girls. Like this is like is girl even... fantasy, which I'm not making fun of. I'm not saying like girl fantasy is all trash. And it shouldn't exist. But I am saying I'm a boy. And this stuff doesn't appeal to me. Right? Like, I just... It doesn't. And I, I wish... One well, I think one of the problems we have in the comic industry is that we can't talk about this. Like, like I think this is one of the reasons why manga does so well. is because manga is perfectly happy saying, this is manga for girls. This is manga for boys. Well... That and, and most of the time, too, I feel like manga doesn't discriminate. Like, it just puts a story out there. If you're a guy, well, comics, hey, cool. If comics girl, didn't, hey, cool. Comics but... didn't either. That's yeah. why, like, Marani has been a comic fan f for a long time, right? Like, she's cool. Like, they never had to be like, 
hey, Marania, we're making girly comics for you. Mm -hmm. But it was right. a product that was primarily targeted at boys. And it was mm -hmm. like, hey, you're a girl and you want to come on over if you want. Like, we're not prohibiting you, <laughs> but we right. are kind of, we are we are a bunch of boys making comics that we wanted when we were kids. Like, it's primarily right. for boys. But you're invited. You can come. And it's it's like the toy industry, right? Like, the toy industry doesn't say girls aren't allowed to buy G.I. Joe dolls. Or, right. you know, and, or you can do what you want, but it definitely knows its audience, right? Barbies. Exactly. They're not marketing well, them to little boys. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, it's and, like, you know, it's like people would say that with Star Wars, though. You know, it's like, you know, people like girls could love Star Wars. Absolutely. I don't think anybody found out a girl like Star Wars and complained about it. But at the same time, they like you said, they knew who they were marketing to. So, I mean, it's it's pretty common, especially in the past. It's, it's changing now with our society. But when a, when a guy makes something. He's making it from a male perspective and generally based on his life experiences of what he understands himself as a guy to like. I expect mm -hmm. women to do the same. And there's there's a very clear – I mean when I read fiction, there's a few female authors that I like, but they're way fewer far between. It's not because they're bad authors. It's because they write from a perspective that I don't really relate to as a guy. And so the stuff doesn't communicate to me quite as well. Just like this scene here. I'm not trying to say necessarily that this is a terrible comic and it shouldn't exist. But comics are a boys club. We, no one wants to admit it. But, you know, 90% of people, well, maybe less these days, but hugely dominated by men. And so you're writing a scene here that's that guys... I don't know any guys are like, oh, look, we're sitting around sipping wine and flirting with each other. Like, this is well, not. It's like Vinkman said, that's to let all the readers know, like, hey, guys, this girl is, is a lesbian. You you can't fantasize about being she's not allowed to be part of your your little fantasies or whatever. It, it's it's the same thing that they all say. Well, when they unsexify someone like She-Hulk, they're like, oh, you're just upset because you can't but, fantasize about her anymore. But that doesn't trigger me. What triggered me is a girl wearing the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is up with that? That What you're saying is valid, but... At least that, that's well, how I'm, I see it. I, I see Vakeman interpreting it that so. way because he is a guy. And none of the rest of the stuff phases him. What do you mean by, what do you mean by that, bro? Did you just assume his gender? You assume but, that because I'm a guy, I don't see things? Wow. <laughs> Sexist. This, just most men aren't interested in, in characters sitting around drinking at a restaurant and, and oh, talking to each other. But she wears but, gloves. That character wears gloves because she, her but fingers but can stretch work. out and make steel ribbons. But... The thing though is, though, Ash, that's only one freaking page. That's not like a whole entire book. If there's the whole entire books of them just sitting there and all having like coffee, and then the next three pages of them having coffee, that's like a that's, that's a Captain Marvel book. I don't read that. That's a that's a Mariko Tamaki book. If that's the okay, case. Okay, well, let's let's keep going here because we get a little bit of action. Annabelle Riggs, you must come with us at once. The galaxy is in grave peril. Angela, hunter of heaven, daughter of Asgard, the destroyer. As guardian weapon of mass destruction. Friends of yours? Sure, sure. Uh, I know all the best sword wielding warrior women. Uh, look, whoever you are, I'm in the middle of something here. Plus, I'm not sure I'm in any condition for universe saving. I'm a little drunk, you know. Then you will be in good company. Ah, uh, Ren, hold that thought, okay? I'll be back before you can. Whoosh. Annabelle? Yeah, now that's Where four pages. Yeah. It's four pages, but like in one page, Superman be like, um, Lois, I'll be right back. Then he never comes back. And this is a 28 page book, by the way. My, my yeah, point I, I is, is like, up. look at how the scene is. Like, they're still flirting, even in the middle of like, we have a universe to save. A guy thing would be like, we have a universe to save. What? The universe, give me my hammer. You know, like, let's go no, save the, guy, the world. The guy would be like, uh, babe, I'll be right back. I gotta save the world, you know. Because you know, like, guys, oh, at least keep that bed warm for me. 
at least historically, <laughs> my generation can speak for the new generation, I guess. We grew up. That's why toys were things like G.I. Joe's and stuff, because we grew up imagining about saving people and making the world safe and, and doing stuff like be, like why military things are so popular with men because it's this is oh, oh, this sort oh. of this sort of male fantasy to protect the family, to protect your if, country, to do things. Hold on, Vanquan, I know you're itching to but but <laughs> but typically tip not I'm not blanketing, typically women don't think that way. And here you can see this white page, the way it's laid out is even though like the universe needs to be saved, but her thing is like uh, I'm not really in a universe saving condition. I've been drinking and I'm like flirting with my girlfriend. Can like you find someone else? Like this is something I don't know. I, maybe you guys are different I, generation or something. I, I look at this and I'm repulsed. Not necessarily because again, because I'm anti women, but this is a book that I go, you're writing this for me. This is. Eh. This book would be what's currently right now on Amazon called Invincible, and Amber getting pissed at him, and he's <laughs> him, he's, he's complaining. He's like, you know what? I'm in the middle of something. Can can it wait? Oh my gosh! Book. I really don't want to piss off my girlfriend. There's a CGC 9.6 graded copy of issue number one of As Guardians of the Galaxy. It's on eBay for eighty dollars, and nobody's bid on it. That person is asking for like seventy dollars too much. Yeah, yeah. This, thing, this thing fell down the rabbit hole or rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. Or the memory hole. The memory hole. It only I don't think it even uh, broke ten issues. The art is good though. I give it that though. It's, you can just it's the concept is cool. I like the concept of it all. I like know. I take these these random Asgardian based characters and it's kinda got like the Ragnarok movie feel to it. I, I dug it, but it's it's kinda like that event that uh, Iron Man book when they took Mary Jane because no one else was using her. So they very well might as well bring her in and give her yeah. a job. They they did the Legends of Tomorrow treatment. They took all the characters nobody was using and they gave it its own show. But it just turned out in this case that it wasn't a very good show or comic. I, no, I want somebody to take these books you're here and just rewrite them. Keep mm -hmm. the panels and just rewrite them in just different dialogue. You have this have character, it. Angela, which is essentially kind of like Red Sonia and Thor mixed into one character. It's Thor and Loki's half-sister. Well, according to Marvel. I'm, just, um, I'm giving you the actual official... She was, I wasn't she was like, a, yeah, she was a comic character for another company, actually. Yeah, I, I know. I was there. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have the spawn issue. She first appeared. Like, she's Neil Gaiman creation. Um, I, keep thinking, uh, I, I, keep, I keep thinking of the life of one Angelina Lewis. My point, though, yeah. is Angela is essentially cosmic Red Sonia. Yeah. Right? Sh you should... You could re you, to put her in a skimpy outfit. She goes around, kills things. Instead, Marvel. Oh god, I just lost. The, why did I add this to my list? Ah, I hate laggy Cause web, so, laggy so, web cause pages. Because you, you want to complain about it, but you really want to read it. Marvel down. buttons are up. You know, same with this other Valkyrie girl that doesn't even exist anymore because they killed all the Valkyries so that Jane Foster could have the title. Um, so. But it's like, and you it's not even them... Samantha Brunhilde anymore. It's that Annabelle girl. Oh, is it? Oh, maybe. yeah. That uh, Annabelle is. Yeah, that's the thing. Is Annabelle was girl. the was the Valkyrie at that time? It was like another personality. Wait, did she you had. see? Did you see Anna? Let it go. <laughs> God. So they put the, the they put the two <laughs> women front and center because of feminism, but then they remove all the sexuality because again feminism. So there's nothing here appealing to boys at all except you're selling it to a boy audience the girls don't want this either because it's pandering and it's feminism isn't exciting to any women except feminist women like mm -hmm. women believe it or not you, you know how vankman loves buying vampirilla and he loves buying well, red sonia and he oh, loves doing this like, because vankman, like let me finish because vankman <laughs> loves women no, because lesbians want to read hot lesbian women. That's what no, they, they want. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so, for, first of all, t t lesbians Lesbian. make up like one percent of the population or less. Like it's oh, it's, it's not insignificant now. Okay, shut up. 
<laughs> My point is, you, you could be your vast majority of your audience, males, straight males, you could be appealing to them, like Bankman's, right? With If you would have made Angela here and Anna look all sexy and hot, uh, Bankman might have been interested in this book. But you didn't because of feminism. But women aren't interested in this either because unless you're a feminist woman, you're not interested in a bunch of bull dyke women constantly browbeating men. Because you know what women like? Like how Vankman likes a sexy feminal, femin, feminine woman? Women like masculine, sexy men. And part of sex, sexy men is being dominant and, and confident. And you can't do that when you're being browbeat by women all the time and constantly showing your belly. So no one likes this book. And uh, true to my point, Dominic says, correction, this comic book is not for anyone, men or women. Thank you, Dominic. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm looking at uh, the writer. His oh. name is Colin Bunn. <laughs> uh, I, that's that's actually what his name is. That and, um, oh, my gosh. You, no, know, no, Colin, but... you know Colin Bunn. He's like... Ooh, I, I've never heard of this guy before. You've never of heard of Colin books. Bunn? No, never heard oh. of him before. Dude, he's like, have... the, he's like the Jason Aaron before Jason Aaron. That uh, cover, uh, that cover though of that girl. Oh, where well, they have Angela. She looks like she has freaking giant bunny ears. Just call her uh, White Rabbit. Most of these books that I'm seeing that he's done, I know they're not long running titles. Like he wrote the Drax series back when they gave every Guardian of the Galaxy their own series. I know that was short lived. Uh, there's a bunch of mini series. Nothing, nothing here really popular, or at least not to me anyway. Oh, well, this Civil is another War thing I love to do X-Men. with feminist yeah. comics is always have your cutesy character. So it's like, oh, tee look, they got a cutesy little animal for. How so random? Yay. The only way this book survives is if, if that Thor is swearing like a freaking sailor and calling hey, them witches. Throg is a cool character, okay? That's what I want. I'm drinking a big giant cup of meat and just telling them, wenches, get away on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want a toxic masculinity, and that's what made so that's, and, and the reason I bring it up because that's what made the Mike Tyson mystery so great because Norm Macdonald was a pigeon. Anyway, <laughs> it ruins so, it. It breaks them all. Proof the stream went off the rails. Proof that uh, as Guardians of the Galaxy ruins everything. Off the rails. He One was did four write, hours. Oh, he wrote like <laughs> two issues of Avenging Spider Man. I don't know why. Which which ones? Uh, issues number fourteen and fifteen. Okay. But then once you get to sixteen, Christopher Yost and Paco Medina take over. So yeah, those are those are actually better. I know I don't know if I'm sounding like, sarcastic a, or not. That's a little bit better cover, but like, if it was just her, I would read it. This is just her, Angela as yeah, Assassin. Yeah, Asgard's okay, Assassin. Okay, well, was, it is. Okay. That was not a long-lived. Uh, Series as well, I believe. Well, it's kind of science dynamite. <laughs> it's, got, it's got good art. If yeah. it was dynamite, it would work. Uh, yeah. Because well, dynamite knows who their audience is. Mm-hmm. And they don't hold back. They go, mm, we're making comics for men or do boys. You that, do you remember then? Because I think it was Chaos Comics that had Valkyrie, was it actually the name of their book? The character. She was like Lady Death's like sister. Or half sister. Like I you said, they had they had their own North like uh, gods and all that stuff in the Chaos Comics back in the nineties. But and look, like I'm cool. Like I just think they should make comics. If you're gonna make comics, and you're gonna be a girl. Like I just think they should be more. I think they would be more successful if they were clearly kind of identified. Because oh, then, well, co- because then people, if you're look, it's like it's like trying to make Barbie dolls for boys. It's just not gonna work. Just stick to making Barbie dolls for girls, and if some boys want to come and get some, you're like, cool, you buy all you want, we're we're happy, but we're gonna keep marketing towards girls because they're the ones that want our product, and vice versa. GI Joe, you know, whatever boys are into these days, actually, boys don't even think like GI Joe anymore. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I think comics would do better if they just didn't try to make every comic appeal to everybody because we're not all the same. Um, nope. And I, I for one prefer comics that dial in the things I'm into, right? Like like a good example is 
Vankman likes the cheesecake comics from Dynamite and uh, Xenoscope. I, I am like, too. Like, I, I'm not as into that, but I'm cool that they ex- – like, I, I can identify them and go, hmm, okay, that's not what I'm into. But I am into, like, high-concept sci-fi books. So when I see, like, oh, Hickman's doing this new sci-fi, you know, like, oh, I could grab onto that. And he focuses on that. Like, and when Bankman's happy because he's getting the book targeted to him, it's not watered yeah, down. Yeah. And I'm not getting soy. I'm getting the actual real milk. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Not not too. None of that low fat stuff. Yeah. Oh goodness gracious! Wanting all that healthy crap. Give me the good Yo. stuff. Yo. Phil Jimenez is the artist on that Asgard's Assassin series. Yep. Is that how you pronounce his name? I thought it was Jimenez. <laughs> no, it's. I think he's Hispanic, so the J is like silent or something. Vankman's from Wisconsin. They don't have it, Hispanic. It does. There. It does like that Y sound. No, we, no, we don't. We're just Germans up here. <laughs> Jimenez. <laughs> Germans and Canadians. Yeah. I thought the Germans were coming from the south. No, never mind. There's a thing like during World War II, they were trying to. There was rumors and stuff that Germany oh, was going to try to come through Mexico. No, not of the Mexico. Not uh, rumors. Yeah, but plans. Were, okay, I think I, I think I say that because they were in Argentina. There was. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they all went to Argentina. That's right. Then Magneto went to go hunt them down. Yeah. All right. Well. I think we should put a bow on this, man. This is like the longest story time stream I've done in a long time. What to say, dude? Go, this is the Snyder cut of Ash on Comics. Seriously, comic fortunately, all of it was at the after the the story, so you, well, you, can, you can crop it, you can cut it. I don't do that shit. That's, <laughs> That's too much time for Ash. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah. I don't, I don't do live streams. If I'm gonna do a live stream that I want people to watch after the fact, like say for example, like Criminal Cast. I try to keep it at an hour and a half because if you people see that time, that time stamp, and if that first number is more than a one, <laughs> they're like, I'm not watching that. Have you done any of the He-Man comments at all on your stream? Mm-mm. Ooh, they just had that trailer come out today for the Kevin Smith He-Man cartoon I'm, on Netflix. I'm going to go watch it. I mean, I've been meaning to watch it, but... I uh I actually really dug it. I thought it looked really cool. I like the music that they chose for it and everything. I have not seen it yet. But what I am gonna do uh is redress Marania's last comment. True facts, He Man line of action figures was going to be marketed as Barbies for boys with multiple outfits for the main character. Oh, I did not what? know that, but it makes sense because we boys would not care about main outfits. We don't care about dressing up our action figures. We care That's about true. them having big badass swords. Natalie so Craig dolls. Yeah. <laughs> big weapons was what we wanted and what so we got. Um and battle cats. Riding battle cats was pretty cool too. Um, Giant tanks, planes that we had missiles and all that crap. Yeah, missiles. I love the dinosaurs. I got the, I had the Jurassic Park T Rex that you could actually put action figures down its mouth and it would like you could pretend it was eating them. That's that rad. Was the best. That was the best action figure ever. That's, that sounds so awesome. All right, so we're going to end this thing. I'm going to – well, we were already in Discord, so we can hang out and talk, uh, watch that pr- preview. But I got to cut this thing off. It's 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 out of control. Thank you guys so much, whoever's here. Uh, if you made it this far on the replay, you are amazing. Um, say something – Give yourself a round of applause. Say something in the comments that <laughs> – yeah. Say say you give me a round of applause in the comments so I know that you made if you did in the replay. So I'll cause some people do, man. I've had people do that. In the, like I made it. The, I was like, what? That's awesome. So uh, thank you, um, and uh, we'll see you probably Tuesday. I don't think there's no there's no independent show this uh, Monday. There only is there only is one independent show, and that's I Love Puppets, and that's gonna be a Friday nights and watch the Castlevania season three stream. Yeah. I'll be yeah. there too. So if you, if for some reason you want to see one of the mini Zacks on on camera, Zach and two puppets. Yeah. Chaos will consume. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> you, you, you can plug your shows when you're on Ash on Comics. It, it, it's but... not, it's not my, it's not my show. I'm just <laughs> advertising for those guys. So. You can plug 
So it's still your it's it's your show you're plugging. You may not be on it, but if you're plugging it, it's your it's your plug. But you don't you can't plug over the host. Come on, that's uncouth. <laughs> I don't uncouth use those big words. That's an uncouth plugging. All right, we've been on here too long. Good night, kids. <laughs> <laughs>